clear in our mind. Tune in and find out, though. Coming up next from Boulder, it is the Buffaloes and the Cowboys. Ryan Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Carson standing by to call that golf ball game. Tim Brando back at halftime with scores and highlights. We'll see you post game with the scoreboard show. Take care. For Lee Corso, I'm Chris Fowler. Enjoy the football game from Boulder. Welcome to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, where the defending co-national champion Colorado Buffaloes tonight take on the Wyoming Cowboys. And as they begin their defense of their national title, they again find themselves answering the critics. People are saying this is going to be a rebuilding year, but uh, what we like to say is going to be a reloading year. We've got to uh, play to our ability, stay focused, stay hungry. No namers who are eager to prove themselves. Colorado will be a team to reckon with. I shouldn't be surprised. It was an absolutely miserable afternoon in Boulder, Colorado. Rain, heavy dark clouds, and just as the co-defending national champions took the field for warm-ups this evening as they faced off against the Wyoming Cowboys, you see what the field looks like. It is splashed with nothing but sunshine. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin. Welcome once again to a Saturday evening of primetime CFA football. But a couple of years ago, uh, Colorado played for the national championship. They failed on that occasion. But last year, they went for it again. They won 11 games. And according to the coaches poll, they won the national championship. Coming into this one tonight, there's one big question to be answered. And that's about the young man that plays quarterback for Colorado. Let's go down to their locker room right now. But my cohort, here's Mike Godfrey. Ron, Wyoming must stop Darian Hagan. Darian Hagan can hurt you in so many ways. Let's, let's look at some of the ways he can hurt you. First, the option. Here you see Darian Hagan, a quarterback, and the option being run. He'll fake the football to the fullback. The defensive end will close on the fullback. He'll bring the ball out to the linebacker and then run the option with the tailback. What Colorado would like to do is get Darian Hagan to keep the football and run it on the option. Now let's take a look at an option where Darian Hagan is successful in making yards. Next way Darian Hagan hurts you is when he sets up the pass in a drop back action and he looks for his receivers. He doesn't see anybody open. The rush converges on him. He has the ability to take off quicker than anyone I've ever seen as a quarterback and dart up the football field and find running room. Another way he can hurt you is throwing the football. In a few minutes out in the field, you'll see this type of action, play action pass where he'll fake, get out on the corner. He'll have a lot of crossing routes. He's a very accurate passer. And finally, there's another way he can hurt you this year. Bill McCartney's going to let him return punch, which I think is a great idea. He'll be a dangerous threat back there. Back to you, Ron. Okay, Coach, and his offensive coordinator, Gary Barnett, says if you can believe it, he thinks he's even quicker now than he was before. We'll find out. We'll be right back. A lot of women find my looks intimidating. Do you? My mother makes the best brisket. There I was, there I was, there I was, in the Congo. Why is a good man so hard to find? <laughs> Just a minute, okay? Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. So while men aren't perfect... You finish that? At least refreshment is.
Mitch Berger, the sophomore from Delta, British Columbia, has the ball teed at the 35-yard line. Amaker Harris, along with Marvin Williams, are back in a twin safety. And the headgear is high over their head. And the Buffaloes repeat in 1991. 60 minutes from now, we will know the answer to that story as it is fumbled, and now Harris crosses the 30 and out to the 32-yard line. And let's take a look at the Energizer starting lineups. The quarterback, now over 5,000 career yards, Tom Carranzos. He does an excellent job. And driver behind him, excellently named, and you'll see why. The wide receivers, the little guy that Colorado doesn't want to see matched up man on man, Rivers can fly. Look for him to get the big ball tonight. And up front, Eric Warden, he is the most experienced of the offensive linemen for the Cowboys of Wyoming. First down, an excellent field position, Mike, as they scrimmage from the 31. As you could see, no backs behind Carranza, flips it over the middle, and that's the man we're talking about, Rivers. On the completed end, and the ball comes loose, but it will be an incomplete pass at the 40-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Buffaloes defensively. Broken hand, it doesn't matter. Joel Steed is an All-American. You'll see a lot of him tonight in this ball game. The linebackers, Chad Brown, Wyoming quarterbacks don't want to see him tonight, but I'm afraid they will. And in the secondary, he's the defensive captain, Greg Thomas, three-year starter. Ron, they opened up with no back, so they're going to show a lot of formations to try to unseat the Colorado defense. Driver, this time the lone setback, number 23. Carranza's heavy backside pressure. Now he's going to run it. Chad Brown in pursuit. He will push him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Going to be a gain of about three on the play. And it was Marcellus Elder, a junior out of Long Beach, who was applying pressure from the inside for the Buffalo. They went to a counter pass. Here's Joe Tiller. He knows that he has to do some things tonight to try to stay in this ball game early. He has to have some good things happen for his offense. They moved the quarterback, Tom Carranzos, around. The pressure came from Chad Brown on the backside, number 34. Bill McCartney. So for all you guys who want to think this is a mismatch tonight as far as the odds makers, he said these kids grew up fighting one another. Carranzo's on a short drop, has the look in, and that'll be good for the first down. Dennis Ross. Chris Hudson making the tackle. Wyoming's well, playing on emotion. And again, a lot of formations to try to get Colorado so that they have some mismatches. Some crossing routes early. Now the draw screens are some things I expect to see from Wyoming to try to slow down the rush of the front four. Well, the point I was going to make a moment ago is that Bill McCartney said these kids fought against each other in high school. They grew up in the same area. They are not in awe of us, believe me, just because we were the co-national champions. Carranza straight give. The driver takes it ahead. And the senior out of Mattinson, Illinois, will take it across the 45. It'll be a gain of about three. And All-American Joel Steed has grabbed him. We talked to Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator of Colorado, and he needs his defense to shut off the run and to force Tom Carranzos into a passing game so that they can pressure him. He doesn't have a lot of mobility back there, so the pressure should come from the front four. Driver again, a single setback. It is a second down, and the Cowboys need the Colorado 47. Driver on the draw has a big opening inside the 45, and he's down to the Colorado 44. Joel Steed had to reach out and get a piece of him. That is a gain of 11 yards. And Mike, if that running game can go like that, Colorado's going to be bothered. They really are. Here's the draw to Dwight Driver. And again, when you throw the ball and continue to throw it, the draw, screens, traps are things that you have to use to try to keep your offense ahead of the defense. Dwight Driver, some say, may be the best running back in the whack. Julian Howard, a junior out of Dallas, Texas, who normally is the sixth defensive back, checks into the secondary for the Colorado Buffaloes. Carranzos has the pass, and his wide receiver did not turn around in time, and boy, he had him. Ryan Yarbrough was making his cut at the 25, and the ball delivered just a little too early. You see Ryan Yarbrough come off. They've got a 
crossing route here, and he comes free. He's open, but Tom Kronzels threw the ball just a little bit too soon. Now, Wyoming went to the shotgun to try to help against the rush also. The one problem you have as a quarterback is your blind side, and that's where I expect Chad Brown to put most of the pressure from the quarterback's left side, number 34. Amaker Harris, number 21, comes in at tailback. That's an emotion to the short side. Colorado with the blitz, and Carranzos, that's Brown who gets him, and the bookends, Wolfhart on the other side. It is a loss of seven, and it'll bring up a third down with the Cowboys looking for the 34 to have the first down. Ron, that's why when you throw the football, I, I like the shotgun better in this situation because you see Chad Brown coming from the backside. Tom Carranzos doesn't see him. I expect Chad Brown to sack him five, six, seven times tonight from that side. Julian Howard comes back into the lineup, and uh, Elder will come out as they go with the extra defensive back. The situation, Driver is in the ball game From the bench, Dennis Ross brings in the play. It's a good time to try to throw the ball down the field. It's a third long situation, try to throw a deep route. And now Carranzos wants to call a timeout. So with 12.26 left in this opening quarter, no score with the Cowboys with a small drive. We'll be right back. Another wimpy sandwich. Not me. I've got Vintage Farms Deli Loaf. It's got real sliced meat chunks. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and go. According to an independent test, when you accelerate in this Eagle Talon, things start to fall off. Like what? Nissan 240SXs, Celica GTSs, Thunderbird SCs. <laughs> What impresses me about this Eagle Talon is its intercooled turbocharger, analog brakes, and four-wheel independent suspension. And you're obviously familiar with these parts. Yeah, I've lived here my whole life. In making an artistic statement, one's personal aroma shouldn't do the talking. So I use Right Guard Sports Stick with maximum protection. A true artiste should be known for inspiration, not perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. This is Sylvie Daimler, Canadian Olympic speed skater. Over the years, she skated over 100,000 miles, done over a million sit-ups and two million leg lifts, almost all of it before most people get out of bed. But if you think she's tough, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Wyoming versus Colorado, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation. And by Bud Drive. Drive brew to a drink's life, yet satisfies completely. Welcome back to this beautiful uh, mountain country. Uh, Boulder, Colorado. Ron Franklin, Adrian Karsten, and Mike Gottfried. And here's the situation if you just joined us. It is a third down and 16 for Wyoming. This is the eighth play of the drive. Caranzo sets the screen. Across the 42 to the 41 is Dennis Ross out of Waco, Texas, who played junior college ball at Northeastern Oklahoma. They list him as a big play guy, and they tried to spring him over the middle, but a good job defensively by the Buffalo. Good call, because that's as good as a draw. It's as good as throwing the ball down the field. Now you try to punt Colorado into the hole. Sean Fleming, who is the star kicker, whether it's place kicking or punting, for the Cowboys, standing back deep. If you're looking at Rico Smith, number 86. He's a senior from Compton, California. Smith runs away from it, takes a Wyoming bounce, and goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. So the Buffaloes will take over deep in their own territory. Darian Hagan, well, they've only lost two since he came in as a starting quarterback. Look for him to have number 87 in his sights tonight, the big tight end, Sean Brown. And up front, they are very young, except number 52. His coaches call him another coach on the field, Jay Lewenberg, an All-American candidate. Ron Wyoming has to move around in their defensive front to have any chance to stop Colorado on offense. Ball along with Hill. 
Hall gets the handoff, his first carry, and he will take it to the 10. And that's Corey Talich who makes the stop. And let's take a look at that Wyoming defense. Uh, Talich, one of the guys we're going to highlight. Rigby is the veteran. He is the consistent performer. Look for number 77 tonight. And Talich, who just made the tackle, if you can believe it, the middle linebacker. He only weighs 195 pounds. Paul Wallace, big hitter at right corner. He's part of the glue in that Wyoming secondary. Brown and Faria, two tight end alignment for the Buffaloes. Oh, chilled at the lighter scrimmage is James Hill. And I'll tell you what, Mike Gaines came through first to make the hit. And the Cowboys are extremely fired up right now. Again, as I said earlier, you'll see a lot of movement in the defensive front. Joe Tiller, who you see right here, knows that he doesn't have the size. You're talking about Corey Talich, 6'2 and 190 at the middle linebacker. They have to protect him. Here's where Colorado becomes dangerous when they run the option. You go with that, what the coaches call a loaded formation. Charles Johnson is split wide to the right. That was Henry in motion. And they go with the draw play, call to the 14. And Kent Call, the redshirt freshman from Fort Morgan, Colorado, will not have the first down. And the Buffs will have to punt. If you're Wyoming coaches, you like the way this game's starting because you know good things have to happen to you for you to stay in this football game. The longer you stay in, the longer your confidence built. Colorado, again, a very young offensive line, and that's there where they thought they'd have a little bit of problem this year early. Well, Rivers is the man I talked about in the opening who they'd like to get the ball to. He's the speedster. Mitch Berger working in practice on Thursday on the high kick, and he got a good one. Good coverage kick. Rivers fumbles the ball, and Colorado has the recovery at the 42. Matthew Bacal and Senna was there as well. Tony Senna is going to be given credit for it. Ron, I was just saying, you don't want bad things to happen early when you're a heavy underdog and on the road and the home crowd is playing a factor in it. So that has to really affect... Joe Tiller, I'm not so sure he's not complaining a little bit down there about the defensive player being a little too close. Here's another look. Ball just went right through his hands. Good coverage by Colorado. Tony Sen on recovery. So Senna gets the ball. It is at the Wyoming 41-yard line after the defense had stopped them cold. Hagan on the option. Tries to turn the corner. He'll have a couple. Glass, who was starting in place of Bowker, Brian Bowker, who normally is the starter at free safety. Glass is the one who gets the start. Very important on the option that Wyoming defensive players know who has the dive, who has the quarterback in the pitch, and now the play action pass, once you run that, becomes very effective. Counter on the option. Hagen turns it back up the middle, has three and now four. Inside the 35 before Kurt Whitehead. He was a sophomore, Kalispell, Montana, his home. Mike, does that take a little wind out of your sails when you have a good defensive stand and then the special teams muff the ball like that? Special teams helped lose that football game last week against Hawaii, so they don't have a lot of confidence in their special teams right now. Take a good ball handling, now under pressure. Spins away, and he's got an acre to run. At the 15, at the 5, and is knocked out of bounds. Here's a replay, and you watch Darian Hagen. Here's the fake. This is the first pass they were going to try to attempt. A little bit of rush, but here's where he's so difficult to defend. He becomes a tailback in this situation. He may be one of the best running backs in the Big 8. Well, that's where he killed you because Whitehead had a shot at knocking him down for a loss. He turns it into a 28-yard gain already. Three carries for 35 yards for Hagan. Down to the one-yard line is James Hill, a big sophomore from Colorado Springs. 
They list him, the coaches just say he has a chronic ankle, but thank goodness he is healthy right now. But Mike, the really impressive thing about him is he runs a 4-4 and he's a fullback. Normally fullbacks are not quite that quick. Well, he's waited his turn. He's played behind George Hemingway and Eric Kissick. And look for him to get the football down here with the tailback because, again, the smallness of the defensive line of Wyoming and the small middle linebacker, Corey Talich. Well, they have marked the ball at the three rather than the one. Reagan on the keep. Touchdown. the extra point attempt by Jim Harper, senior out of Valencia, California. Kick is up and he's perfect. So, Hagen, if you had any questions, a 28-yard run to set up the touchdown, and here he takes it to the outside, and his Buffaloes lead. The whole idea of the design behind Jeep Cherokee is to get you wherever you're going, safe and sound. Or if you prefer, safe and no sound. They just love us for our minds. Tribe Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down. To drink light yet satisfy completely. In fact, refreshment like this is almost. Win a trip for two to the thrifty car rental Holiday Bowl, including five days in sunny San Diego. You'll see a great game. Visit SeaWorld and drive away in a 1992 Chrysler LeBaron convertible. To enter, stop by any thrifty car rental location or fill out the official entry form in select Monday editions of USA Today. Or simply print your name and address on a 3x5 card and mail to this address. Round trip air transportation provided by US Air. 7-0, Colorado on top. And you can credit a miscue for the special teams, and that was the downfall of Wyoming last week, or what started it, we probably should say, against Hawaii. Five plays, 41 yards, just over two minutes. And, of course, the big play, Darian Hagan with the 28-yard run, a play in which he probably should have been dropped for a loss. Well, he was reading the option all the way. He, he read that the keep was there. Talich came off and almost made the tackle on him. But the dangerous part of running the option is when you're on the goal line, it's really effective on, on offense because... You really have to defend inside because of the shortness you have to go for a touchdown. Mitch Berger is going to kick off. By the way, Hagen, of the 41 yards covered on the drive, he had 31 of them. The reason Barnett, his offensive coordinator, said that he thinks that he is quicker, he said his knee is actually still very tight because the operation, the part that was injured was a stripping that came across the top of the knee. The two wide receivers, or the two deep backs, actually, Harris and Marvin Williams, who you've got to look at just a moment ago. Boy, he kicked this one to downtown Boulder. Five yards out of the back of the end zone. Let's go downstairs to Adrian Carson. Ron, thank you very much. Obviously, as you say, 31 out of the 41-yard drive. Darian Higgins left off, or picked up rather, right where he left off last year. You're wondering why he didn't return or wasn't back for the first punt return. Coaching decision. No problem with the knee, I'm told. Training staff, Darian Hagan is ready to go. All right, Adrian, you know, part of that explanation, Bill said, I gave in to him to, and allowed him his wish, and that was to return punch. But if we're in a no-return situation, then I'm going to have somebody else back there. Blitz coming up the middle. Bronze's pass, just overthrown. 
Rivers, the man they were looking for. Driver had come in motion all the way over to the sideline. It looks like when Wyoming goes to a no-back offense, that Colorado's going to press their receivers and also blitz the linebacker. But not to allow them a lot of time to try to find those receivers and make him throw the ball down the field. Next Thursday night right here on ESPN, you're going to see two teams who will do very much the same thing as far as putting the back in motion with nobody behind the quarterback at the meeting between Houston and Miami next Thursday evening. Shotgun formation on second down. Whips it. It is intercepted at the 46-yard line by Bradford. see Tom Caronzo throwing the ball up the field. Just a great interception by Ronnie Bradford. He came right in front of the receiver, picked the ball off. But Ron, let me tell you something. If Wyoming's going to throw the football all the time, it's going to be a long evening because you really are going to be tough against a Colorado team who's got a great secondary, good pass rush. Somehow, they've got to get something going on the ground. They've got to get a little bit of running game going. To show you the concentration by Bradford, his teammate Greg Thomas almost knocked the ball away from him, had a hand in his face. Hagan will keep it. Last minute pitch, call, and he will take it to the 42. That's Paul Wallace, a junior from Omaha. He's considered the best cover guy in the secondary for Wyoming. Darian Hagan runs the option so well and is so much a threat. And if you're the strong safety and the free safety, two defensive backs for Wyoming, you better start being involved in the run game. But watch, eventually they're going to throw a deep play action pass and complete it for a big play. Charles Johnson has come in the ballgame with wide receiver just out of the picture to the bottom of the screen. And that's who they're going to, and he's open. Johnson just over his outstretched hands at the 10 yard line. Johnson, only a sophomore from San Bernardino, very, very steady and in fact the coaches say there's not much drop off when Rico Smith comes into the or goes out of the ball game and you bring in Charles Johnson. Well, they have so much speed just as I said the play action pass is such a threat even if you don't complete it Ron the strong safety and free safety know now I can't get up there on that pitch man as quickly as I have been so you settle them down a little bit so now you come back with the option with the fullback. Third down for the Buffaloes they need the 36. Hagan with a screen over the middle to call, and he is not going to have the first down. Excellent play by Corey Tallis, that middle linebacker. Pine blocks Wyoming to his home, only a sophomore. Let's see what Bill McCartney elects to go with here because it's a fourth down, and they need about two, almost two and a half. And Berger will come in to punt it. These fans know when you have Darren Hagan, they figure you can pick up two yards anytime you want. But this is a good decision. Pin him down inside the 20. His first punt was 46 yards. That's a good sign for the Wyoming defense after a turnover to be able to hold Colorado. Delay a ball game against Colorado. And I'm going to be amazed if Wyoming takes it. <laughs> Dead ball. Delay of game on the offense. Five yards. Repeat fourth down. I'd make him kick it right back there again, Mike, so he puts it in the end zone. We'll see where the ball ends up now because that five yards may make a difference. Now, let's, let's see what happens on it. I'm like you. Turn it down. Make him kick it. You turn down the penalty and you got it at the 20. 42 yards in the kick. <laughs> That's not the biggest problem you have. Problem is that you've got the, your offense on the one yard line. Now well, the top college football record since 1989. Colorado's number one, Miami. That doesn't surprise me. Most people might not realize Houston is up there or Fresno State for that matter. And as we mentioned, Miami and Houston, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, down at the Orange Bowl Stadium. Who will it be? 
David Klinger? Or would it be the Miami Hurricane? Mike, I know you're going down for that. You've got to be excited. Really excited. Looking forward to it. Driver, 10, 15, and out to the 20-yard line. Wolfort is there to make the stop, and it's going to be a keen of 19 yards. The first time tonight, Wyoming went to a two-back set. When they're in a two-back set, it's usually going to be a run. You see the trap inside. They got to the linebackers. Good run by Dwight Driver. Again, they were able to block the linebackers, get people in their face, and he broke for a good, good game. Ron Wolfolk on the top. Three carries for him now, Mike, for 33 yards. Got to get the running game going. You can't just throw to beat somebody, especially when they're better than you are. Amaker Harris, a senior out of Junction City, Kansas. Number 21 comes into the backfield. That's him in motion. Pass is caught. The markers come down, and there's going to be either offsides or procedure. And I'll tell you what, Ralphie couldn't have caught Rivers, and that's what that's what Wyoming's looking for is that single matchup. That's what they're going to get. But when they go to a no-back set, Colorado is going to blitz them, and they're going to play those receivers tight. So you need illegal procedure, false start on the offense, repeat first down. That's going to be both teams' strategy. What happened there, Ron, is. One of the linebackers jumped up real late and made an offensive lineman move. Well, it could have cost him a touchdown. <laughs> that was the voice of Larry Fisher. He was a Big 8 official out of Tulsa. He was the referee in tonight's ball game. All Big 8 crew. <laughs> Amaker Harris on the sweep. But that speed of the Colorado defense, Chad Brown had got over to put a shoulder pad on him. I think Richard Harris was the first man, number 88, who tripped him up. You're not always going to be successful running the football, but at least they have to play the run. And, and now, when you run that play, then you can come back and run some waggles off of it with your quarterback. Explain what do you mean by a waggle. Waggle fake the same type of run action you've seen there. Tom Francis to go out there, fake the ball to him, and then come back in the opposite direction with receivers coming across the middle. You know, that same play, which is kind of a bounce play, they ran successfully against Hawaii last week. The speed of the Colorado defense, they're going to have trouble getting that one outside tonight. Toronto's again, the short drop, he'll run, but not far. To the 19-yard line, and number six is Eric Hamilton, a junior from Inglewood, and he is listed. The coaches said, if you want a description on him, just put a, he's our hitter, and put it at capital H, and you could see that right there. I like what Wyoming did right there. They moved one of their wide receivers in motion. What that allows them to do, it gets away from the defensive man that's right on top of him, and you may look for them to be able to get somebody over the middle or over the ball open because of that move. Well, it's third down. The Cowboys need the ball just across the 30. On third down conversions, they are one of two tonight. Aranzos, in and out of the hands. Oh, my, Julian Hayward had it in his hands and then just dropped it. What Colorado's doing on defense, they had a chance to see Wyoming play last week. Here you see Tom Carranzo throwing the ball down the field. The reason he has to throw so far down the field, and that was supposed to open, is Wyoming is not able to get the short routes. Darian Hagan is back this time because they are in a returnable situation. I love this. I argue with Lee Corso. I like this. Sean Fleming to punt. And I think if I were Sean, I'd kick it toward the boundary. Either one. Well, he did. But I don't think he wanted it quite that short. That is not going to make midfield. So Colorado will take it over three times in a row with excellent field position. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas, when the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with a great picture and four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask for picture-in-picture picture with triple flashback. Ask for the hottest ideas in home theater. Ask to see a Zenith. 
For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. This Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only, save big on Nutrisystem's fabulous 50-50 sale. For the first time ever, save 50% off a guaranteed program and 50% off your first week of Nutrisystem food. Why not call the number one rated weight loss program? I did, and I lost 25 pounds. Call now. Remember, you only have three days to save on Nutrisystem's fabulous 50-50 sale. Call 1-800-321-THIN today. If it happens in baseball, you'll see it on ESPN. And there he goes. He leaves. He makes the catch. See Tuesday night doubleheaders, Wednesday night excitement, Friday night twin bills, and exclusive Sunday night action. Milwaukee's Paul Molitor is setting his sights on a batting title for the Brew Crew. Dave Winfield powers the Angels' attack. Two veteran stars lead the way when the Brewers face the Angels live on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. I wouldn't have volunteered this to Darian. He came to me with the idea, but to me, that's what college football is. College football is... You don't worry about all of those other things. And you give a guy a chance to do the things he's capable of doing. If he's not scared to do it, then why should I be scared? <laughs> well, there's some people who might disagree. I ask you the question during the timeout. Do you think he might have jumped into the head of Fleming and caused that bad kick? I don't think there's any doubt. Plus, he jumped into the, the minds of all these fans, and they really liked it and got excited also. Bell and Hill. The two running backs, and it is Hill who comes at the left side, takes it inside the 35-yard line and down to the 34. Now, he is coming off the block of a young fellow by the name of Clint Moore, number 66. Clint is a true freshman and, in fact, the first guy since Eric Bieniemy to play in his initial game as a freshman at this school. I think it says something about what kind of a background he had. I think it's very difficult for a freshman to start in the offensive line. Of all the positions on the football field, that would be the toughest position to start. So you know he's a pretty good prospect. Second down, keep an eye on Sean Brown. The big tight end has caught nothing so far. They go with a straight-ahead running play, and James Hill will take it in the vicinity of the 29, which will be short. Wyoming is running a tilt defense, which means the nose guard is tilted toward the center. This was something that the Pittsburgh Steelers in their great days of the steel curtain uh, invented and brought into a, to try to stop a, a young man that played for the Houston Oilers, Earl Campbell. Joe Green used to run that tilt. 43 Scott Phillips, who's a sophomore from Monument, Colorado, comes into fullback as Hill takes it straight ahead and have the first down plus three. Tom Kramer is there to make the stop for Wyoming. And I'll tell you, field position has been wonderful if you're a Colorado Buffalo fan because three of the last four times that they've had the ball, Mike, with the fumble by the special teams, the interception, and this bad punt, three of the last four times they've had it across the 50-yard line. Well, it's going to be important for Colorado to push it in here and take advantage of this field position. Ball is pitched at the last minute. Oh, what a defensive play is Pat Glass comes up and Bell got the football and glass at the same time. <laughs> Watch the free safety, number three. You see him start out, he has the pitch all the way. He goes out and makes the tackle on number 31, Matt Bell. On an option play, somebody's assigned to the dive, somebody's assigned to the quarterback, and somebody's assigned to the pitch. Now, when you see a long option break, it's because somebody either got blocked or missed the responsibility. 7 to nothing. if you just joined us. Colorado on top. Just under a minute and a half with the pass. Has him open? Incomplete. And there's the tight end we were talking about. Sean Brown. A senior out of Granada Hills, California. I'll be sure and join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann for the most comprehensive NFL preview show on television. The hour-long ESPN NFL game day, Sundays at noon. And then newcomers to this year's show will be Chris Mortensen of the Sporting News, Greg Garber for the Hartford Current to provide news, reports, interviews, and also features. Here's where Dan Darren Hagen's dangerous. Third down, Nate. Ball is tipped and incomplete. Chad Cahone, number 95, one of the outside linebackers, got a hand up. 
Darian Hagan challenges the corner. There's nothing really there. He'd been better off just tuck it and take off and run. So a field goal attempt, and this is Jim Harper. A 40-yard attempt. Now, Jim has a 60 to his credit, but that was in high school. But he said that was at sea level. He said, I don't think there's any difference in the air up here. In fact, I'm not sure I can kick a 60 at this elevation. Has plenty of distance, and he's got it. You can't kick in this weather. You can't kick anywhere. It's an outstanding kick there by Jim Harper. Well, I had a talk with him on Thursday as the kickers were out early and, and asked him if, if it was an advantage to kick here or like at Provo. And he said, I really don't think so. And that's what he told me the story of he had the 60-yarder in high school. And he said that was at sea level in Los Angeles. But uh, he said, I'm not sure I could do that at this elevation. I really don't think there's a help. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten, who is down on the sideline. Ron, thank you very much. Well, the Colorado cheerleaders may be fired up, but I'm going to tell you what. Wyoming is more fired up. They came in here so fired up because of something Bill McCartan said nine years ago. In his first year, he said, this game has always been bigger to Wyoming because they play in a lesser conference. This week, Wyoming pulled that out, put it up on their bulletin board. They came in here ready to play. They think they're doing the job now. Okay, Adrian, thank you. Ron, Adrian's tie last week was bad. This week, it's worse. You, you think his tie comes from a lesser conference? <laughs> I think uh, it does. <laughs> See Bobby Simmons there, outside linebacker coach, talking to the outside linebackers about some of the formations they're seeing right now. It's giving it some problems it's with Ron Wolford, who came here as a quarterback. How do you ever heard of a quarterback on the outside linebacker? They've let him put on a little weight. He's close to 240 now. Harris and Williams, the deep safety. Wyoming needs to get some field position here. They just haven't had it the last four times they've had the football. Hard to do it when Berger keeps kicking them out of the back of the end zone. And let's go back to Tim Brando for an update on today's happenings. Tim. Ron Oregon is playing without their starting quarterback, Brett Salisbury. So what do you do? You pitch out to Sean Burwell. 12-yard touchdown run. The Ducks leading the Cougars 12-7. Back to that dapperly dressed duo, particularly with their ties, Ron and Mike. <laughs> Some of the clouds to the west of here. It, it rained very hard, and the lightning up in the mountains was spectacular at around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Cleared off just as the Buffaloes came on the field. And the weatherman says we might get a few more sprinkles tonight. Driver gets the handoff, has a couple of yards. Beekert, number 19, is on the bottom of the stack, and you can see 34, Chad Brown. But Chad had quite a transition to make. He's been on the inside. They've moved him back out. Watch, watch Greg Beekert, number 19, just scrapes. No one picks him up. You just see the, the end there where he makes the tackle on Dwight Driver. They are so strong up front that Wyoming is double-teaming Joel Steed to try to give Quentin Skinner, the center from Wyoming, some help, which means there's nobody to block Greg Beaker. Beaker last year not only led this team, but led the Big Eight with 150 tackles. Taranzo, short drop, he's going to run. At the 26-yard line, It'll bring up a third, and they'll need four as Leonard Renfro makes the tackle. Interesting thing there, Ron. Greg Brown, the outside, Chad Brown, the outside linebacker, came inside. You wouldn't do that against a, a quarterback with great scrambling ability, but he was able to put pressure on Tom Carranzos because he's not a mobile quarterback. Clock runs down to one, and that is the end of the first quarter. So let's take a timeout here in Boulder. The defending co-national champions, 10, Wyoming nothing. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation, but I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. Introducing the new Fram Extra Guard. 
New glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. The new Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. How hot can it get inside your car's engine? 570 degrees under extreme conditions. Take a leading motor oil. Take Mobile One. Of course, Mobile One costs more. But under extreme conditions, when you see what can happen to conventional motor oil, it doesn't pay to play with fire. Mobile One, isn't your car worth the extra protection? Rick Mears and Mobile One finished in the winner's circle at the Indy 500. Mobile One, the choice of champions. Wrangler Renegade. It's not just a dream anymore. Colorado 10 to nothing as we open the second quarter. And don't forget, at the end of tonight's telecast, Mike and I will be picking Visa players of the game, one from, from each club. These are players of the game coming up at the end of tonight's ball game. Alonzo's five-step drop incomplete, and that's probably the worst pass he's thrown tonight. Got it behind Rivers, and Rivers had a step on the defensive end. He doesn't want to get in third and fours or fives or longer because he's going to face six defensive backs. Perry's trying to throw the ball to Robert Rivers. Again, motion, trying to move him around. Tom Francis has him open, just misses him. Here you see, great route by Robert Rivers, breaking off man coverage. Just a little too high. He turned around. Sean Fleming to punt again. Needs a good one. As Hagen is back at the 31. Far sideline, and he runs Hagen out of bounds. That is a great job by Fleming that time. Can't get hurt when you're running him out of bounds, and that's what he did at the 34-yard line. So the first time that Hagen went back, kick off the side of his foot. But this time, Sean Fleming, who holds just about every Wyoming kicking record that exists, kicked it high and long and for the sideline. Gary Barnett, the offensive coordinator, has to love the field position he has right now. I'd look for a little bit more play action pass this series off of Darian Hagen. He's been a little high on his first couple of throws, and I know they want to try to get the passing game going, and they'll have to get him in the group. Hagen sets in the pocket, coming to the near sideline, well overthrown. Rico Smith was the closest man to it, and I assume the intended receiver. They lost Mike Pritchard, so they have to really feel like they have to come back in their passing game. The player I look for early, to, as we talked yesterday and watched the practice, is Sean Brown, the tight end. Keep your eye on him in the next two plays. Rico Smith going out of the ball game. He has a calcium deposit at the top of his uh, thigh, and they give him off on Thursdays and Fridays because a little contusion on that. And they rest him. Doesn't seem to be bothered by it running in tonight's game movement at the line of scrimmage and Hagen finally the whistle blows flag down on the far sideline now what happened was the tight end came out of his stance he can reset but he didn't reset and then contact was made by Wyoming he moved forward Ron, so yeah. he, he drew him offside they're talking about it the point you made is exactly what they're talking about 
moving up or was he moving back? Sean Brown, number 87, the tight end over on the left side. Inadvertent whistle, live ball foul, penalized, replay the down. Okay, so the storyline on this one so far, if we try to figure out exactly what that interpretation was, uh, the Army storyline, be all you can be. Hagan, rushing 39 yards, one touchdown, scored a two of four drives as Colorado Wyoming, their longest drive, 28 yards. A couple of turnovers, one with the special teams, then an interception, have been indeed costly. Larry Fisher's going to both benches to try to explain to the coaches what the penalty was. What I would think happened there is exactly what you said. There was movement. He still can get back and set. Drew them off sides. They blew the whistle, so they're going to mark it five yards. Ten to nothing, our score with 14.39. Left until halftime. A sold-out house, and it's the first time. This surprised me that the opening home game in Colorado, first time it's ever been sold out. Bill McCartney has brought this program from a long way back. I said the other night on TV that, that Louisville and Howard Snellenberger in Colorado and Bill McCartney and I throw Bobby Ross and Georgia Tech have done the best job of building the program back. Now the, the discussion continues. <laughs> Officials have their problems in the early season also. Well, it's... Bill is is trying to get his money's worth over there, but it's kind of like that Travis Tritt country and western song. Here's a quarter. Call someone who cares. Hagan delivers it high. Caught by Smith, but he cut it out of bounds. And let's go back to Tim Brando. Ron, from our walk-ons and water boys games departments, take a look at this. Penn State 81 to nothing over Cincinnati. Joe Paterno running it up today, even with walk-ons and water boys. And Cal beating Pacific 86 to 24. Russell White, 132 yards rushing. He's a sleeper for the Heisman Trophy, Mike Godfrey. Those are basketball scores, Tim. 10 to nothing to count right here, and another flag is down. So Wyoming declines the penalty. It will be a third down situation. And Wyoming needs to protect the 45-yard line. But that's where the Buffaloes need to take it out to if they're going to move the sticks. Colorado's been out of sync on offense. Uh, Darian Higgins has been high on his passes. The running game, the option hasn't opened just like they'd like it to to this point. But the Wyoming defense has been on the field a long time. Really have. Higgins, by the way, one of six for three yards. Middle screen, and they've got it complete. That's Westbrook. Will have five yards and take it across the 35 to the 37. But Chad Cahoon, the junior out of Chetmore, Kansas, is there to make the stop. More and more coaches are not using the conventional screen. They're using either the H back or the you know the tight end type or the wide receiver to bring it back toward the middle, aren't they? There's so many screens. You can hit one in the middle. You can hit them off to the side. Uh, the middle one's tough when you because you don't see the wide receiver coming in, and they clear out with backs and tight ends through the linebackers. Berger to punt his longest 46. He has a couple for 44. Gonna have to hurry on this one. Very high. Rivers calls for the fair catch. And he makes it at the 27. So let's take a break. 13-26 until halftime. Colorado by 10. Flying coach was a bit of a drag, but I'm here. <laughs> Jane, I'd like you to meet Peter. Peter makes movies. Uh, features. Hi, we were just talking about this movie that HBO made. It was so intense. Did what? you make that movie? No, 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 I didn't. Oh, oh you didn't make that. I'm at home thinking they'll never show that. And then they show. Were you talking about that HBO movie? They're really guts. Oh, huh? I didn't even know they made movies. Did you make that? No, no, I didn't. Oh, oh. Yeah. I read that movie caused a lot of controversy. But you probably stay away from stuff like that, huh? Too risky, huh? If it's a movie that's powerful, provocative, a movie that gets talked about, you can be sure that HBO will make it. It was edgy. Poignant. No, I didn't make it. Excuse me. I heard you make movies for HBO? Uh... Yes. Yes, I do. HBO original movies, only on HBO. You know, people have been talking about my movies all night. 
For the past two years, more hardworking truck owners switched to Chevy than to any other truck. And now Chevy full-size pickup is America's best-selling truck. This is... Number one, for one simple reason. Heartbeat. They work. The heartbeat of America. Today's number one truck is Chevrolet. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Wyoming versus Colorado, is being brought to you by Chevy Trucks. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. And by McDonald's, getting more for your money. That's McDonald's today. Really a spectacular sight here in the Rockies, Boulder, Colorado. In a filled house tonight as the co-defending national champion, Colorado Buffaloes, at home for the first time since capturing them. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Chad Brown is right there to make the tackle. Let's go down to Adrian Carson for this update. With now athletic director Paul Roach, we still call you coach. You took Wyoming to three bowl games in four years. Whether it's Wyoming, whether it's the national champion, how do you maintain a program like that? Well, that's difficult to do, uh, particularly in our case, because last year we had two or three areas of our football team got hit hard with graduation. So we got a little rebuilding process going on in a couple of those areas. Coach, why are we seeing an all Big 8 referee crew today and not a split crew? Well, this is a one-game shot. Uh, we both had glitches in our schedule. Our problem, Kansas State, there's Texas Tech. And so we agreed to play here, and the home team has a preference for the officiating. Who is responsible for the schedule this year? Do I understand it was either the national champion this week or Oklahoma? Tough decision, Coach. Well, we had an opportunity to play either, and I think that because of uh, uh, the proximity, keep it in the Rockies. We get 30 players from Colorado on our football team, and I think they get a little jacked up a little bit more for this than they would if we were in Norman, Oklahoma. Coach, enjoy your life as athletic director. Let's go back upstairs to Ron and Mike. Okay, gentlemen, thanks so much. That was Greg Brown with the reception. That is the longest gain by Wyoming tonight. It's 21 yards, and they have it one yard shy of midfield. take it to the sideline and instead of coming out of bounds stopped and took on the tackle <laughs> Mike, he could have run on out of bounds and he's lucky he was going to cut it back up field Renfro weighs 270 I think he saw 6'5 and 270 he wasn't sure just exactly what to do figured if he took another step he felt him out of bounds anyway so he was trying to stop and make sure Leonard Renfro slide by First down's been a bad down for Wyoming. They, they need to get something more on first down so that they're not always in long yardage situations because Colorado's able to bring in the six defensive backs. SMU jumping on top of Arkansas tonight. Three to nothing in the first quarter. Drop play. Driver has an opening. And I'll tell you what, if the tackle is not made by Hamilton, he might still be running for six. The draw has to be a good play the six defensive backs in the game. Here's a draw to Dwight Driver. Watch it open up. There's the linebacker knocked down. Now he has a chance if he gets the corner away from Eric Hamilton for a touchdown because the defensive backs are on man coverage. It's a big drive for the Wyoming offense. They need to establish some time. They need to establish something on the ground get good mix you gotta when you're an underdog you gotta do what the other team doesn't expect again now you're in a second and long situation Ron second and 11 Watch the rush here by Joel Steed. They're doing line twist to try to confuse the offensive line to Wyoming. They come out, and here comes Tom Carranzos, who's not known to try to move around, is starting to move around in the pocket. Brian Diet makes the tackle. Diet, one of two tackles, actually capable of starting. Marcellus Elder and Diet, actually, the coaches say, are just even Steven. He used one for pass rush, one against the run. 
Harris in the draw play. No place up the middle. Great job defensively. It's going to be third and 11. And Woolfork, number 56, the former quarterback out of Detroit, is there to stop it. They played the draw better there. Here you see Ron Woolfork out of Detroit, Michigan, communications major. Again, came to see you as a quarterback. And when they, Darren Hagan got injured, he talked to the coaches about whether they wanted him back. And they said, no, you got to stay on defense, young man. You help us too much over there. Throw a, a few pra practice passes, but not in the ball game anymore. Ten to nothing are count. Colorado lead, and Wyoming driving. It is a third down, and they need the 30-yard line. Taranjos delivers it at the 35-yard line, breaking the tackle of Swinson. And you know what, Mike? He may have the first down in the second effort. Great effort by Matt Swinson. Tom Carranza's under pressure. Watch the pressure come from the right side and the left side. Again, Chad Brown, again, almost making the play. Here comes Tom Carranza out, hits Matt Swenson. He's wrapped up in pretty good shape by Chris Hudson, number 47. Almost picks up the first down. I'm gonna have a measurement. I'm impressed with Tom Carranza so far. He's been under pressure, and he's Very made cool. good decisions on the run. You know. Bill McCartney paid him as nice a tribute as you can pay yesterday in our meeting with him. He said, senior quarterbacks who have been around for at least a couple of years, I always had the utmost respect for. You see, they miss it by about six inches. And if you're Wyoming, you're down 10 to nothing. With 9.27 left until halftime, I think you go for it, There's no you? choice. you got to go for it. But Carranzos, with his ball game last week of 229 yards and the one touchdown, now for a career is thrown for over 5,000 yards. And in fact, last season, almost 2,800 last year alone. Here's where they'll go to a two-back set now. Remember, they're a one-back offense. Tom Francis, four completions, 10 attempts. They'll go to a two-back set now to try to get a lead blocker. You know what? This would not be a bad time if Joe Tiller wanted to go with a play-action pass and try to go for a bomb. Again, underdog situation, 10-0 wouldn't be a bad call. Needs to pick up the first down. He's going to go to two backs. Look for Pennington to lead the Dwight driver. Quarterback Snake, you'll have it. Carranzo straight ahead, and the ball will be spotted at the 29 yard line. Beneath all of that is Marcellus Elder, the junior from Long Beach, number 97. He is credited with the stop there. The big fella gets up. Carranzo's one other thing we need to mention about him, Mike. Besides all his credentials as a quarterback and those numbers, two times he has been a whack all-academic member. Oh, he's outstanding. He also played on the basketball team for Benny Dees and assistant Ray Jones up at Wyoming. And uh, they said he was a... A good player. He's a good athlete. You saw him there with 6 3 201. Uh, be able to make the quarterback sneak and pick up the first down. You see the clock showing 9 15 left until halftime. Driver hit by Elder again. And I'll tell you, Marcellus Elder and Rocco, Quentin Skinner, a warden, none of the three have been able to handle him so far, regardless of where he lines up. Remember one thing, you've got Joe Walgren who's 6'4", 260, and you've got Eric Warden who's 6'3", 263, but they're moving in people in and out on the defensive line. Marcellus Elder, 6'5", 285. He's fresh because Brian Diet was just in at 6'6", 250. So the Colorado defense has a lot of depth in that defensive line, and you win with defensive linemen. Steed has just gone out, as Colorado will come in with still another defensive back. They're six. has him open incomplete and actually that's not the man I was talking about because over the middle Dennis Ross had broken free at the six or at the 10 yard line it was a good play call because he ran it off the draw they had some success with the draw and I watched Dennis Ross he got inside coverage by Julian Hayward he's covered him about as well as you can cover a player he's there for an interception outstanding coverage it was Yarbrough number 16 who had Come clear at the 10. 
but a good job by the secondary of the Buffalo. Julian Hayward's playing a lot in the nickel and dime situations this evening. Harrison motion out of the bottom of your screen. They set that middle screen and it's stopped immediately. Rivers caught the football and Chris Hudson, a redshirt freshman from Houston, is right there to name it. But I'll tell you about Hudson, he would have played last year. He was that good, but they were so deep in the secondary they didn't need him. No back setup. He's looking for Robert Rivers coming inside. A little pressure on him, but very good coverage by Chris Hudson. Man-to-man -man coverage. He was a step behind him and made the play. This is going to be a 46-yard attempt by Fleming. He had a 45 against Hawaii. The longest in his lifetime is 68. Ball is long enough, and he got it. That 68 came when he kicked in high school up in British Columbia. And this one is good for 46 yards. So let's take a timeout. Colorado's lead. Cut back to seven. Of all the trucks in its class, only Chevy four-door S10 Blazer gives you four-wheel anti-lock brakes. Standard. Which helps you steer through a curve while braking. Without it, you don't have as much control. And why should that be important to you? Because in the real world, safety doesn't have to be an option. Chevy S10 Blazer. The heartbeat of America. want more more tastes more choices more for your money that's more of what you'll find at mcdonald's today where a regular hamburger's just 59 cents a cheeseburger 69 cents and our new chicken fajitas just 99 cents that's more for you and more for your money that's mcdonald's today Hey, kid, you're on your own now. Oh, there'll be tough times. There's a lot of cold years ahead of you. But I know you can come through. You'll, you'll warm up just fine. Remember, you come from dependable stock. I know you won't let me down. Just remember whose name you're wearing. I'm proud of you. Real proud. Heil, furnaces that can stand up to the cold year after year after year. 10 to 3 or score was 739 left until a halftime in the scoring drive 12 plays 45 yards and Fleming with the 46 yard really, this turned into a delightful evening after heavy rain and uh, quite an electrical storm here this afternoon I think you're going to be in the, there's going to be an electrical storm in that Colorado locker room at halftime if they don't start perking up a little bit because Bill McCartney is probably feeling them going a little flat right now. You, you made the point two series ago that it was like all of a sudden they've gotten out of rhythm with the offense a little bit. And uh, Hagan at that time was only one of six with his passing game. And I think that's probably what Bill's going to say. We've got to get that going a little bit, guys. This is Johnson from the five. Fleming, one of those, making the stop at the 25-yard line, along with Rob Merchant. Well, don't forget, Sunday, Major League Baseball, Milwaukee at California. And, of course, in the Major League, uh, American League batting race, Franco's on top of the 342, then Boggs, and Paul Molitor at 333. Still very much in the hunt. And, of course, the guy on the right, Big Bay Winfield. 16 home runs, 70 RBIs, hit with cool 257. Herzog just gone to work executive capacity for that baseball organization. We'll go back to the running game. Power set hit at the line of scrimmage. Can't call the tailback. Talents from that middle linebacking spot. What's your reaction so far as far as Paul is concerned? Wyoming is doing exactly what they have to do. Uh, he just doesn't have any place to run right now because Wyoming is confusing that young offensive line of Colorado. They're moving around. Talich was not blocked there because the tilt defensive nose guard took the block of two players. So that left him free to come off and make the tackle. 
Who you miss in there at the enemy. I don't care who you line up there, you're gonna miss him. See that power I set, that's Mark Henry who goes in motion away from the line of scrimmage. Pitch to call. Has five, bounces off, has ten, and he'll have it out to the 35-yard line. Ty Muma, the strong safety, a senior out of Torrington, Wyoming. Well, Bill, McCart make the stop. Bill McCartney's thinking right now is, hey, we've got a young defensive team there. I'm going to just run the football at him. Here's Kent Cole on the toss sweep, picks up the first down. Eric Edmond makes the tackle. But now thinking, let's get back to basics, run the football. Eventually, they'll throw a play-action pass, run the option. And let's try to make a good drive in this last six minutes and 35 seconds and go down and score. This time, Westbrook comes in at wide receiver. He is split to the left as they go option. And the pitch back to Call. Hit at the line of scrimmage. We'll have one, maybe a couple. That's Pat Glass. Glass is quite a hitter. Muma is supposedly the hitter of that Wyoming secondary, but Glass was a starter tonight because of the injury to Brian Bowker. And he has uh, done a good job with the hit here a couple of times. If you're sitting up here as a Colorado offensive coach and you see a free safety make the tackle on an option like Patrick Glass just did, you know eventually you're going to come back to that post pattern behind him for the wide receiver so we can look for that. 6.23 left until halftime. Colorado 10 and Wyoming 3. Hagan on the option. Pitches. Call fumbles. Picked off of the air by Wyoming at the 40, at the 35-yard line at a pat glass. Boy, he did an outstanding job again. Darren Hagan was a little high on the pitch. First of all, they brought the tight end in the backfield to give a different look to the Wyoming defense. Here's how you play the option. String it out. Now Patrick Glass. Here the ball's fumbled. Just picked it right off the ground. They are extremely fortunate that Glass was falling down because the running back, Paul, had his back turned. He could have advanced that right on into the end zone. So the first turnover by the Colorado Buffaloes tonight. The longer they stay in this game, the better shot they have, of course, but the better shot they get of regaining confidence. They had a tough loss to Hawaii in the opener. Nobody gave them a shot in this ball game. All 30 players from Colorado, it means a lot to them right at this particular point. They need to do something now offensively. 30 players on the Wyoming roster from the state of Colorado is what Mike is referring to. Aranzo's gonna have to hurry. Tripped up on the line of scrimmage, and I'll tell you, Joel Steed saved a bunch, and now here comes the flag in late at the line of scrimmage. Usually when you have not running around that long, somebody's holding. So we mentioned the late flag coming in, and you see it is going to go against Wyoming. This is the best field position that they have started to drive from all night long. Tom Kronstos was scrambling, and a clip came on the back side. Well, coming up at a halftime, the halftime report scores and highlights. Tim Brando and Lee Corso. How about them dogs in Starkville? Mississippi State jumps up and bites Texas today. And Jackie Sherrill now 2-0. Hang on to the Southeastern Conference. And I'll tell you, David McWilliams has to be flying back to Austin thinking, I better wake up a sleepy time offense or I'm going to have a 500 season coming to me. They're Great defense and no offense. Well, they're partying in Starkville tonight. So the flag, the penalty, moves it back across midfield. And with the 15-yard penalty, Mike, now 25 yards to pick up the line to make. He is just outside the 26-yard line. Aranzos again running for his life. Gets it away complete to the 45-yard line by Ryan Yarbrough. And Chad Brown just got up and patted Carranzos on the shoulder and probably said, I don't know how you, you got the pass away. Thought we had you. Watch Chad Brown come from your left. Here's Tom Carranzos under pressure again. He's doing a pretty good job of getting away and getting the pass off. Uh, 
he's not a mobile quarterback, but yet he's making the few step moves that he has to to avoid the rush, avoid one or two players, and then throw the football. Total yards in the ball game. We told you Colorado had been having excellent field position. That tells the story right there. They are under 100 yards for the first half, but they lead it 10 to 3. And now Caranzos wants to talk it over with his coaches. 5.02 left until halftime. 10-3, the Buffaloes. Now you can get the highest quality copies in town delivered right to your door. Just call Kinko's, the copy center. We pick up your originals and deliver clear, quality copies directly to you. No more traffic, no more lines. Depend on Kinko's. We pick up and deliver. Kinko's is your one-stop copy center with plenty of top quality, easy-to-use machines. A place to create, a comfortable workspace, a wide selection of stationery and office supplies. Open early and late, Kinko's is your full-service copy center. You subscribe to the Daily and Sunday Denver Post for 85 cents a week because you get Sundays free, right? No way. It's got better sports, more color, and it's bigger. Come on, it's because Sunday's free, right? No, it's the only paper with sections we can share, and it's actually there, 6 a.m. I guess you don't care if you get Sunday free either, huh? What, are you nuts? I got it because of the deal. You give me Sunday free, you got me. Call 832-3232 and get Sunday free. It's bigger, it's better, it's free. Call right now. Yards. The big game is here. College football on ESPN. It's bad. They're big. They're fat. They're the beast of the East. They're the Miami Hurricanes, and they have one bite. To torment David Klingler and the Houston Cougars. Thursday night, live. It's a jungle out there. It's College football on ESPN. Houston and Wyoming next Thursday night. I know you're going to be down in Miami along with Mike Patrick. I think that thing just ought to be one of the, the best ones played all year. I think it'll be a classic football game. Two great football teams. Mike, can I give you a hint? He's going to be awfully good, but take a lunch pail because as much as they both throw, that thing might be about four hours long as well. I'd hate to be an official in that one or a stat keeper. Driver as the lone setback. Situation, second down and 20. 5.02 left until the halftime. Caranzos will be sacked. Ball is loose. Beekert is the man who came flying through from the top side. And let's see who's got it. Caranzos is still down and was shaken up after the hit. Walgren. The junior right tackle from Brady, Nebraska, made the recovery. It's going to be a loss of nine. Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, is going to start bringing linebackers, start putting a little pressure on. Here comes Greg Beaker late, a delayed blitz. And Ron Wolfork, also from the blind side, number 56, made the play. Watch number 19. This is a blitz, but it's a delayed blitz. Now he comes. He didn't come right off the bat. The back's going to pick him up, but he was airborne. Very difficult to stop him at that point. Beaker and Woolfork. Beaker, the coach of Sages, has an excellent work ethic. Third down. They set the screen. It is complete in the flat and tackled at the 40-yard line. And Woolfork is having an all-world game tonight. Ron, they started at the 36. Great field position and went backwards. And they have it at the 40, but it's their own 40. Good defensive, uh, a good defensive exchange by the defense of uh, Colorado. Darian Hagen back in the deep single safety. Ready to receive this punt from Sean Fleming. Good high spire. Hagen all the way back to the nine. Marker comes down, and we're going to have a clipping called against Colorado back at the 17-yard line. That's a 50-yard kick and a 16-yard return. So let's wait for the call, but the flag went down right in front of the cheering section. And a Colorado player got up and slapped his headgear. Couldn't get his number, but clear. 
on the flank during the return, 15 yards, only half the distance to the goal. So there's a timeout on the field, 3.13 left until the halftime. Buffaloes will scrimmage deep. I hope you're enjoying your evening. If you suffer from chronic halitosis, try Halo. Formulated Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and... The worst thing about installing Heil heating and cooling systems is saying goodbye. Heil is so dependable that once I've installed one, I don't know if I'll ever see it again. And that's why I take so many pictures. Here's my latest. And if you buy a Heil system now, you can get help. Five years of extended protection on parts and labor. Now, at participating Heil dealers. Heil, you can depend on it year after year after year. 24-hour stakeout. Here I'm coming. Your equipment better work. And in close quarters, your deodorant better work overtime. That's why Sure made new Pro Stick for men to protect for over 24 hours. In close quarters, we didn't want Pro Stick to come on strong and fade early. New Pro Stick has a long-lasting ingredient, so our scents don't come on too strong but protect for over 24 hours. Got it. Who's we'll caught a night? You know. Give me the day. Try new Sure Pro Stick for men. The Pro works overtime every time. Tonight on the Adventure Channel, join explorer Marceau Soulanaire as he unlocks the mystery of the Great Barrier Reef. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Welcome back to Boulder. Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. Glad to have you along on this Saturday evening, 10 to 3, Colorado. Big favorite in this ball game, leading by only seven. Just over three to play until intermission. Straight ahead with James Hill, the fullback. Goes for maybe one, and Tim Brando. What's going on now? You know, Mike Godfrey made a statement about coaches. One that never gets enough credit is Rich Brooks of Oregon. Watch now as Drew Bledsoe of Washington State throws over the middle. It is intercepted by Eric Castle and return to the four leads to a touchdown and a two-point conversion. It's 20 to 7. Okay, Oregon off and running right there. Injuries are no. To the 16-yard line this time with Kent Cole. Again, very tough runner, received what they call the Hale Irwin Award, given to the most promising sophomore in spring practice. Sophomore, as far as books are concerned, he is a freshman in football eligibility. He was redshirted last year from Fort Morgan, Colorado. Six one, two hundred pounds. And anytime you take over a position that was occupied by a B enemy, it's tough. Going to go downtown and almost intercepted. Rico Smith, the intended receiver, and Paul Wallace he just was trying to make a really tough over-the-shoulder catch. After the play fake, Darian Higgins going to throw the bomb, but Rico Smith got too far inside. Watch the throw here. The throw's outside. Rico Smith got inside. Good defense by Paul Wallace, but that was caused by Rico Smith going too far inside, Ron. The numbers on Hagen throwing, two of eight for 12 yards in the ballgame. This is Mitch Berger. Pressure coming on him. Rivers from the 32. Rivers got what he could and then got out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Oh, next Thursday night, be sure to be with us when David Klingler and the Houston Cougars bring their record-setting offense into the Orange Bowl to face the always tough defense of the Miami Hurricanes. Battle of two of the top ten teams in the country. Mike Patrick and Mike Gottfried will be there with all the action Thursday nights. That is 7.30 Eastern time for the Orange Bowl. Two great coaches. Dennis Erickson doing a great job in Miami. John Jenkins in Houston. Looking forward to seeing them both and seeing that ball game. <laughs> it ought to be special. Wyoming's got a minute 47 left. Toronto, 6 of 13, one interception. Zings it, and it's intercepted. No drop by Beekert. Beekert was there, dropped right back into coverage. Craig Beekert on zone coverage is going right back 
away from the football in the hook zone. Watch him drop here. He's reading zone now. He just goes back and he sits down now. He's playing receivers, playing the whole field. He was surprised that the ball was thrown right to him. Almost brought it in for an interception. Don't kid him about that in the films tomorrow if they win. We see the big neck brace and everything. And sometimes those linebackers have a little trouble getting their arms extended really high in the air, don't they? They do, but they, they have those, those drills are run by the linebacker coaches every day. Clock stops with a minute 41 left until halftime. Middle screen. Great call by Wyoming. Breaking one tackle is Jones, and he'll take it to the 45, and that is enough for the first down. Story on Mike Jones, he is a converted wide receiver. They just made the change two weeks ago. Well, he was wide open. They caught him in a stunt. They caught him in line twist and a stunt. They also were faking that they were going to set up either the quick screen to the outside. Toronto's did a great job of looking the defense off and then throwing it right back over the middle. Mike Jones is a receiver. Even though he's lined up at tight end, he's a receiver. Toronto just, just threw that one away. Nobody open. He had a quick pass on there, five yard route. Dion figures moved right up, took that away. He did the smart thing, five year. Quarterback just threw the ball over his head, threw it out of bounds. Seven of 16 with one interception for 62 yards. Coming up next, that is for Carranza. Coming up next, a halftime report, scores and highlights. Tim Brando and Lee Corso. Aranzo, short drop, look in pattern, in and out of the hands of Greg Brown. Greg, a senior out of Houston, played at Yates High School. Had good defensive coverage, almost came back with it on a second effort, and it'll be third down. Just a three-step drop by Tom Carranzos, which is very difficult to get to him when he does a three-step drop by the defensive line. He had Robert Rivers, but just like you said, excellent coverage, but coverage by Dion Figures. Third down conversions. Wyoming is one of seven. I think he wanted Pennington to move, but he didn't. Zings the pass over the middle. Has it complete. And it's short of the first down. Brent Tillman. The quick look in. So they're going to spot the ball down at the 37. He's not going to have the first down. In fact, just outside the 37. And with that, Sean Fleming will trot on the field, and they're going to punt the football. With 50 seconds left until the half time. They're going to play it safe, Colorado on defense, expecting a fake. Well. Gets his kick away, kicks it into the end zone. It might be the answer, so that's going to go in for the touchback. If you're coaching, why would you not let the clock run all the way down, run out that clock to take it down to deprive Colorado of any time left? The five-yard penalty. Anyway, they, they did a hurry up, so Colorado, as a result, is going to have 33 seconds until halftime. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Ron, I just come from the Colorado bench, and I'll tell you what. The guys over there are emotionless, flat-footed. Not only their defense, but their offense. They are standing around looking at each other, wondering who's responsible for all the, uh, the flat-footedness out here. Now, you keep in mind that perhaps most importantly, you put Wyoming's last couple offensive drives together, they have kept Darian Hagan off the field for almost nine minutes. Adrian, right now, there's 33 seconds left. Henry in motion as the pitch goes back to Bell, and he'll take it out across the 25 to the 26. The, the point I would want to make right now is, is the timeout being used. Eventually, Colorado is expecting to wear down the smaller Wyoming team. Now, again, Bill McCartney will have to get their attention at halftime, but Adrian's saying they look flat to me right now. And he'll have to get some kind of when he gets them in there at halftime to try to get them going. But they will eventually, if they continue to play like they're playing, wear Wyoming down. Here's 
another note, Mike. Colorado with only three first downs in the first half. Wyoming has seven. And the point that you make is the offensive line averages 276 pounds for Colorado to only 256 for the front four for Wyoming. So far, Wyoming has still been very, <laughs> been very agile and very alive. They've done a very good job of moving around. And uh, Scott Downing, the defensive coordinator, told me, he says, hey, we've got to make them hunt us. We just can't line up where they can find us. Scott Downing has done a very good job with this defensive game plan today. Hagan up into the pocket, fumbles the ball, and Wyoming has it at the 29-yard line. And now a flag comes in. Wipe the flag off. No flag. That's first down. White. Undoubtedly, the official was looking for his beanbag and inadvertently threw the flag rather than that. Gary Barnett would like to have that back, that play back. And now, just Bill McC as you see Bill McCartney here, Darren Hagan goes back to pass. Here's the twist up inside again by the middle guard. He becomes a linebacker once he starts twisting. There's the play. Darren Hagan just didn't put it away. Now the key is. We have 16 seconds left. Wyoming has one timeout left. Talich made the recovery. The 195 middle linebacker. He's had an excellent first half. Caranjo zings it in the flat. Has it complete. Rivers will step out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Figures knocked him out. Now, Ron, with 10 seconds, I think you still have time to try to throw one for the end zone. You try to get a touchdown, be a safe pass. You don't want an interception right here because you know you should be able to come away with three. But you still have time with one timeout to throw to the end zone. All right, let's see. No movement on the sidelines by Sean Fleming. That's exactly what they're going to do. Or draw play here to get a little bit better field position. They're ready to call timeout. I think you throw the end zone. Puts it up for the end zone, and it is almost intercepted. But out of the back of the end zone, Greg Thomas, the defensive captain. So four seconds left until halftime, and Fleming will come on to attempt the field goal. Colorado is playing uptight on the receivers. What the Wyoming receivers are doing are crossing at the line of scrimmage. Robert Rivers came wide open on that play down the middle. He just didn't see him. So here comes Fleming with an attempt of 37 yards. He hit his one earlier tonight from 46 yards. And he missed it to the right and no good. Whoa. The Buffaloes dodge one there. So Sean Fleming very uncharacteristically moves toward the locker room with his head down. Colorado 10, Wyoming 3. Okay, kid, you're on your own now. Oh, there'll be tough times. There's a lot of cold years ahead of you. But I know you can come through. You'll, you'll warm up just fine. Remember, you come from dependable stock. I know you won't let me down. Just remember whose name you're wearing. I'm proud of you. Real proud. Hiya. Furnaces that can stand up to the cold year after year after year. Again! Again! Why have the great outdoors become an indoor sport. Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed, not watered down, to drink light yet satisfy completely. So while we may have some things inside out, refreshment isn't one of them. For the past two years, more hardworking truck owners switched to Chevy than to any other truck. And now Chevy full-size pickup is America's best-selling truck. 
Number one, for one simple reason. They work. The heartbeat of America. Today's number one truck is Chevrolet. Welcome you back at halftime. Colorado doing all they can to keep Wyoming in it, but right now they lead it by 10. Tim Brando along with Lee Corso. Only one top 25 score currently underway, and that is Florida State. They are now leading Tulane 31 to 3. Casey Weldon has three touchdown passes in the game. Earlier today, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame taking on the Hoosiers of Indiana to open their 91 campaign in South Bend. And let's show you what happened. The two players who were in the news were certainly in the news on the field today. Trent Green off play action. The Indiana quarterback is picked off by Demetrius DeBose. He'll go all the way for the touchdown. They led it 28 to 17 at the half. But Lee Corso, let's show him shaking down some thunder from the sky as Bill Mallory has to watch Rick Meyer go to work to a bruising tight end. He hits, num he hits number 84, Irv Smith, right there. And watch him. He carries the men 30 yards. You got me? 30 yards. He looks like it's a bulldog in, in a rodeo. No, that's rodeo, Lee. Rodeo. Rodeo, rodeo. rodeo. It doesn't make any difference. That's an all-time NCAA record for carrying two guys. Wake up the echoes of Mark Bavaro, right? Notre Dame, 49 to 27 over Indiana. Meanwhile, Michigan, the team that they are going to play next week in action against Boston College for the first time. Take a look at this. A touchdown toss. For Glenn Foley to Keith Miller, 24 yards, B.C. leading 7-0, opening kickoff for the third quarter lead. Desmond Howard, Michigan's answer to rocket his mile. He get, breaks it to the right, cuts back to the left, and it's all over. 4-2 speed, Michigan was sleepwalking, but that really woke him up, and they finally started playing Big Ten football. So they go on to win the game by a final score of 35 to 13. We're going to keep it in the Big Ten and show you what the Hawkeyes did today against Hawaii. Final score 53 to 10 as Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes get the job done. Matt Rogers 12 of 18 of 168 yards. The Buckeyes of Ohio State taking on Zona. That's a man that knows a lot about Arizona. We're talking about John Cooper. Now take a look at this. Jeff Cothran. You say, well, Robert Smith's gone. Well, they got Carlos Snow. They got this guy. Deep in the depth chart, 39 yards, 31 to 14 Ohio State at that time. Folks, believe me, Ohio State is talented. They will push in the Big Ten race. And look at that, Pinote of Ohio State, 15 rushes for 189 yards and one touchdown. And don't forget, you'll be able to see the Buckeyes and the Louisville Cardinals right here on ESPN, 1230 Eastern Time, Saturday. And, of course, Howard Schnellenberger has uh, some mending of his own offensive backfield. He lost his quarterback in the game against Tennessee you saw back on Thursday. But I think the major story coming off of those games, Lee, would have to be, do we have any questions answered about Michigan and Notre Dame going into that big classic game next well, week? Well, first of all, we, we know that Rick Meyer is the secret to Notre Dame's offense, but Notre Dame is suspect on defense. Indiana controlled the line of scrimmage and did very well against the Notre Dame defense. All right, we're going to talk about Washington and Stanford now. This is a ball club the Washington Huskies that will push to make the Rose Bowl again, and Don James may be in the national championship hunt. And they got a quarterback here named Billy Joe Hover. That's right, Billy Joe, looking for Mario. Mario Bailey on the receiving end, 21-7, Washington. Fourth quarter, look at Hover. No jumping off the Tallahatchie Bridge today. He goes to Joe Kralik, 20 yards for the touch, 28-7, Washington. And they roll on to a 42-7 victory. The Huskies won that game last year by a score of 52-16. to Dennis Green's club was, as Lee Corso said, a little too big, a little too slow. We're not going to be slow in this halftime, though. We're going to continue to motor on with our score machine, and we're going to show you a guy that was a winner in College Station, then became a car dealer. Now he's winning again in Starkville, Mississippi. In today's financial climate, you need the strength and stability of the Buffalo at Hennessy and Bulls. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and... In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents. 
a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right guard sports stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. The most important part of my job as an ERA broker is helping people. Because these days, selling a house takes more than putting a sign in the front yard. It takes a commitment to service. It starts here with our exclusive ERA products and programs that help sell your house faster. It's the most comprehensive commitment in the industry. And it's our promise to give you just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend. For me, that's what helping people is all about. List your house with an ERA broker. ERA, first in service. If you wear extremely lightweight Rockport hiking boots instead of heavy hiking boots, your feet lift something like 20,000 fewer pounds every day. Rockport's all-terrain vehicles for your feet. Welcome back to our ESPN Halftime Report with Lee Corso. I am Tim Brando. Well, he's had some success against Texas in his past, has Jackie Sherrill, but never before while an SEC coach today... Mississippi State taking on the Horns of Texas, a ball club that is loaded. But take a look at Sleepy Robinson. William Robinson to Tredis Anderson. He'll go all the way in for the touchdown. It is 7-3 dogs in the fourth quarter. 13-6, David McWilliams looking for a win against Cheryl. And Peter Gardere, his quarterback, who, by the way, is experienced, needs to come up with a play on fourth down to keep the drive alive, but he's sacked by Rodney Stowers. And Mississippi State upsets 13th-ranked Texas. They are celebrating in Starkville. Two key defensive stands by the Mississippi State defense. And there's no question, Lee Corso, that they will be a factor. By the way, the last time they won over a ranked team was 86. That was Rocky Felker, the predecessor, his first year. Well, you know, well, you know Jackie Sherrill is obviously a very fine football coach. But let me give you the advantage also. There's a rule of thumb in coaching that a team improves more, most from the opening game to the second game. This was Texas's first game. It was Mississippi's second. That's why I think they beat them. They had that first game under their belt. Let's face it, too. Winners are winners. Cheryl is that. He's always had strong defense, and he's got it again. No question. But remember one thing. That advantage was Mississippi State. All right. We're going to talk about a team that had a huge advantage earlier today to the tune of 81 to nothing. Penn State with the most points ever of a Joe Paterno coach team, most points ever in any Penn State game, 81 to nothing. California with Russell White, again, the Heisman candidate, 132 yards on the ground. Pulaski also had a school record, six touchdowns over Pacific. Florida and San Jose State, 59-21. The Gators rolling along. Shane Matthews with air ball under Steve Spurrier. Alabama and Temple. This one was supposed to be a little closer. Jerry Burns got a good club, but not of the caliber of an Alabama. 41-3. Saran Stacy, a couple of touchdown runs, 18 for 95 for him today. Now... Alabama will be taking on Florida next week in the Southeastern Conference. It is prime time on ESPN next week. The Clemson Tigers always win big early, but they always play Division I AA opponents early. Over Appalachian State, out of the Southern Conference. Nebraska, talk about teams that schedule light early. How about Tom Osborne's group, 59-28 to the final. Syracuse is tough, and it was the Italian Open today. Paul Pasqualoni and Jerry DiNardo making their debuts at the respective schools and Syracuse comes with the win 37 to 10. We had the U.S. Open at Flushing, New York and you had the Italian Open at the Carrier Dome. Stay with us. We will be back with much more in our ESPN Halftime Report. Right now, Colorado a bit sluggish, but Darian Hagen can always be a difference. They lead it 10-3 at the intermission. It's 10 nothing actually. 10 nothing folks. This Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only, save big on Nutrisystem's fabulous 50-50 sale. For the first time ever, save 50% off a guaranteed program and 50% off your first week of Nutrisystem food. Why not call the number one rated weight loss program? I did, and I lost 25 pounds. Call now. Remember, you only have three days to save on Nutrisystem's fabulous 50-50 sale. Call 1-800-321-THIN today. You got your dreams, your big ideas, you want them all to come true. But can you depend on your bank to really help you through? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You give you all and all that you do. But can you depend on your bank to do the same for you? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. University 
be Wyoming. Aren't they just a bunch of cowboys? The University of Wyoming, where cowboys and a whole lot more. Come on, guys, pick it up. A lot of us like to go run in the mountains real early in the morning. The teachers I've had at the University of Colorado all have one thing in common. They're extremely committed to their field. They have so much energy and, and want to pass that on to their students. I know in my environmental studies classes, it's great to have an impact on undergraduates. All right. Quickly, let me correct myself. It is 10 to 3 right now at the half, folks. So, error, Brando on the Chesterfield scoreboard. Now, back to more scores. SMU and Arkansas. Quality football at SMU since 1989. They lead Arkansas 3 to nothing that game in the second quarter. Baylor and Texas El Paso now 14 to nothing. Grant Taft will push in the Southwest Conference. TCU leading New Mexico. Jim Wacker's group now up 24 to nothing in the second quarter. Texas Tech leading Fullerton State. That score now is 20 to 7 in the second quarter. Jamie Gill of Texas Tech a couple of touchdown passes in that game. Mississippi taking on Memphis State. This is not surprising because Memphis State is really playing on a neutral site against Mississippi. So very close to Oxford in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl. Tulsa taking on Oklahoma State. It is now 13 to nothing. T.J. Rubley is a name that you need to remember, the quarterback for Dave Raider's group. He was injured a year ago. Kansas State has taken on Indiana State. That game now at the half. It is 14 to 7 in that ball game. Kansas is playing Toledo, 14 to 7, also at the half. Tony Sand, 10 rushes for 90 yards in that game and one touchdown. Ball State has taken on Navy. It is now a 21 to 10 score in that ball game in the third quarter. Corey Coombe, 60 yard touchdown run and a two yard touchdown run in that ball game. Kentucky. Now here's a team in the Southeastern Conference that always pads its schedule with a light non-conference offering. They play Miami of Ohio. It is 10 to 9. You'll recall last year Central Michigan did the trick against Bill Curry's club. South Carolina and Duke, 24 to 10. The Gamecocks. They have owned Duke in this series. Barry Wilson in need of a victory in that ball game. All right, stay with us. We've got many more scores to tell you about as we continue with our halftime report. Our score, 10-3, Colorado. sheltered in the harbor, and some would rather sail into life with the unmistakable scent of Old Spice. Clean, true, and classic, Old Spice, one of the legends of the sea. Athletic. Also available for the entire family. First time we met, I thought he's cute. I'd see him on campus and we'd talk. Then he asked me to this party on Saturday. It was a good party. But after he'd been drinking a while, he was out of control. And people are looking at me like, you're with this guy? I had someone else drive me home. We welcome you back. Quickly, we're going to tell you about some games that are currently in progress, some that are now final. Washington State now trailing Oregon 33-7. to They are rolling along now. LSU and Georgia, pivotal game. Could mean the upper division for Ray Goff in a pivotal year. They win 31 to 10. Virginia Tech and NC State, Fuhrer will Fuhrer five interceptions in the game. Wolfpack win it despite themselves. Southern Mississippi and Pittsburgh, the Panthers under Paul Hackett, maybe the most improved team out of the East this year. Southwest Louisiana, can you believe this? Jeff Bender to LT Muddy, 
for a two-yard TD pass with no time remaining for Central Michigan this afternoon. Iowa State and Eastern Illinois. Sundelia Patterson with four touchdown runs in that ball game for Iowa State. You know, we are extremely happy here at ESPN to be announcing to you that each week we will honor the Toyota Leadership Award that will recognize the qualities of the players that are taking part in our CFA primetime college football games this season. To tell you more about the program, here is Ren Rooney, Corporate Marketing Manager for Toyota Motor Sales. Starting in 1985, we developed the Toyota Leadership Award. Each week, coaches and faculty members select a player who best exemplifies outstanding leadership in the classroom, in his community, and on the football field. We are extremely proud of all the past 229 winners. This group of dedicated athletes gives inspiration to all young people to reach their potential. 20% of our past winners have gone on to graduate school with degrees in law, medicine, and business, and are turning that on-field achievement into off-field success. Nearly one quarter of these athletes have become professional football players. Quarterback Jim Everett of the Los Angeles Rams, safety Steve Atwater of the Denver Broncos, and quarterback Steve Walsh of the New Orleans Saints. Not only are these individuals leaders in their chosen profession, they have remained active in their communities. Over 50 leadership winners speak to the youth of America about saying no to drugs and the importance of staying in school. Their time spent in community service includes helping those less fortunate with Special Olympics and the Big Brothers program. We at Toyota feel it is important to recognize the hard work and dedication that goes into being a leader. That's why we created the Toyota Leadership Award. Each week, we will contribute $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each winter school. On January 1st, we will feature the 1991 Toyota Leader of the Year during ESPN's telecast of the Peach Bowl. Toyota will donate an additional $10,000 to the school's general scholarship fund of the winter. So far, Toyota has donated over $400,000 to scholarship funds at universities throughout the country. We are pleased to team up with ESPN in announcing the Toyota Leadership Program and look forward to a great college football season. When it comes to buying a color TV, many people think state-of-the-art begins overseas. When the truth is, state-of-the-art starts here. You just have to know what to ask for. Ask for the only TVs with a great picture and four ways to enjoy stereo sound, like Bose and Dolby Surround. Ask for picture-in-picture picture with triple flashback. Ask for the hottest ideas in home theater. Ask to see a Zenith. For true innovation in television, quality never looked more like a Zenith. Sheila has been studying the art of conversation. Oh, you're taking a course in conversation? Yes. Yes, I'm calling from my car. No, oh, hang on, just a second, let me get rid of this other call. Do you need decaffeinated coffee ice cream? Okay. All of a half double decaffeinated half cap with a twist of lemon. You know, I thought that uh, I'd show you around town a little bit. Why don't we walk? <laughs> a walk in L.A. L.A. Story. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 40. score at halftime as both teams have just come back out are the defending co-national champions Colorado 10 and Wyoming 3. 
what I'm holding in my hand right here are the official stats of the first half. Two numbers on there say three first downs Colorado. Just three and barely over 100 yards. I have a feeling Bill was not real nice at halftime. No, Colorado's out of sync on offense. They haven't established anything in the first half. Wyoming gains confidence the longer they go. So it, it, that's something that Colorado is going to have to explore and do a better job. In the what does this tell you about the first half? Well, I think the biggest thing and the most obvious thing to me is that Colorado is now playing their first game. Wyoming is benefiting from having played a game against Hawaii. Okay, let's go down to the field. Adrian Karsten visiting with Joe Tiller of Wyoming. Thank you very much, Ron. Coach, what did you tell the Cowboys is the most important thing they have to do the second half to win this game? We've got to continue to run on defense, and we've got to hit the open receiver on offense. It was there a number of times the first half, but we did, just didn't execute. But we got to play for 60 minutes, continue to run to the ball. We're going against a team that's more talented, but we got to play on pro Are you afraid of being worn down by the Colorado offensive and defensive line now in the second half? I don't think so. I think our guys are fresh and they feel good, and I, I'll be very surprised if we have any any let up because of the size. Coach, see. Thank you very much, Coach Ron. Thanks, Adrian. Well, we're going to see. Now the lights are taking effect as the sun is about to go behind the Rocky Mountains to the west of us. And Wyoming will kick it off. Charles Johnson is back deep for the Buffaloes. Ted Johnson on the return, and he takes it check it Chris Hudson and he takes it out to the 25 yard line now Ron look for Colorado to get back to their offense pull back dive option pitch play action pass Darren Hagan comes out 107 total yards in the first half but the other number that you pointed out was the fact they don't even have 20 yards passing Two for eight. He's been high on every one of his throws in the first half. They go with the running play. Matt Bell will take it for a couple. That's about it. What Wyoming is doing on defense is continuing to move. They're, they're light. They're not, they know they have an offensive line except for Jay Lewenberg, the center, that's very young, and this is their first time out. So if they feel like they cause them some problems with the movement, and they really have caused them problems. Westbrook checks into the lineup as Kent Paul will go out. Probably my, my other surprise is we thought that Sean Brown, the tight end, would be more of the offense in this ballgame. Hasn't been so far. Hit in the backfield and knocked down for a loss is Bell, and that's Muma. Ty Muma from the strong safety position. Colorado went to a two tight end offense now to try to balance up the front, try to get him from moving. Here's the toss sweep at time Yuma. You see him come up, just make a shoestring tackle, and again, good support, not support by the secondary. So now it's third down. And with the loss in the play, the line to make for the Buffaloes is the 35. Hagan drills it, has it complete at the 35, and there's Sean Brown being pushed back but it's enough for the first down and now a late marker comes in it's going to cost the Cowboys 15 more we thought he'd catch five six passes today Bill McCartney feels like he's the best tight end in the country there's a tight end over in Nebraska that's not bad also Notre Dame's got a few tight ends Derek <laughs> Brown and yeah, they... Derek Brown So they're going to say incidental five yards rather than 15. See the play action and just a throw to tight end. Just an outstanding pass to Sean Brown. During the run, first down. Big third down conversion by the Buffaloes. As Wyoming really came back fired up in the second half. And they were about to get a one, two, three, and out until the completed pass. And again, Colorado goes with the two tight end set. Embry also in the lineup. Bell to the 45. And Colorado all of a sudden has decided that Bell is going to be used more at tailback than Call has been used. Paul Wallace comes up from that right cornerback spot. I said it a little earlier about uh, Notre Dame's tight ends, Derek Brown, Tur Smith. He had a brother who went into professional baseball. Just outstanding players. He's the tight end that made that catch today. 
about the 15 yard line and just rub the carried two. carried the student body into the end oh, zone. Did a great job. Hagan on second down gives to the first man through and James Hill is just in goal. It's going to be third down and Buffalo's looking at about six. Corey Talich, that sophomore middle linebacker, comes up to make the hit and Wyoming with the player shaken up. It's an important drive for Colorado because they have to establish themselves in this drive. For Wyoming also. Doug Rigby, the senior out of Nebraska. Let's see if we can get a closer look at exactly what happened holding that left arm. Watch Doug Rigby from the left side of the screen to see what happens. And he caught his ankle underneath the pile. third down a hit in the backfield ball is loose and Wyoming has recovered at the 44 yard line Steve Kluten took his legs out from under we talk about a big play defensively because this is a key series Steve Kluten will see the ball being handed off to Matt Bell but look at Steve Kluten comes in the backfield before he able, was able to get to the line of scrimmage Patrick Glass number three recovers the football. They're just getting too much penetration against a young offensive line of Colorado. Now back in the first half, the last time that the Cowboys had the football, they had it inside the Buffalo's 40-yard line. They wound up being pushed almost back to their own 35. It is imperative right here they pick up a couple of first downs. This is the strength of the Colorado team, this defense. Until this offense starts to come along, this defense has to carry them. Three wide receivers go to the left. And they go with the draw play and a big opening. And Driver will take it down to the 31-yard line. Eric Hamilton made a big, big tackle as Wyoming got him spread out all over the field. Colorado's trying to play with the nickel and dime defensive backs, which means they only have five, six people in the box. Here's the twist again. Sometimes when you twist, you go the wrong way and you get cut off. And that's what happened on that particular play. And Dr Dr Driver was able to gain good yardage. Roseboro is down. Senior left tackle as you get one more look at it. The Dwight Driver just keeps his legs pumping. He is an outstanding back. Here's the situation. With Roseboro down, Quentin Skinner was injured in the first half, so this is two starters in the offensive front that Wyoming is going to be playing without right now, and they've already been decimated by injury. So let's take a break. More about that in a moment. 12.33, left in the third. I couldn't wait to call in my Toyota story. I play hard in the outdoors, but I need a truck that I can depend on to get me there. My Toyota's got 123,876 miles on it and still plays as hard as I do. I'm in the delivery business. My Toyota truck has 352,917 miles on it. This is our bread and butter, this truck right here. If it's not running, I don't go to work, and we don't make any money that day. Uh, I love what you do for me, Toyota. Get up. Get out. Get down to McDonald's today and get a great deal on breakfast. A sausage biscuit's just 79 cents. And our new breakfast burritos, just 99 cents. So get with it. Get more breakfast for your money. Get down to McDonald's today. McDonald's today. It begins at dawn. They've come for you. And they want what you have. It's your bed. You're sort of perfect sleeper. But it's the most comfortable spot in the house. The Serta surface and support only Serta builds in makes it that way. So if it gets a little late for breakfast, there's always brunch. Is it any wonder people are saying, I want my Serta? Welcome back. Very big series for Wyoming. They have a first down at the Colorado 31. Little counteraction hit in the backfield, and Leonard Renfro just devoured the ball carrier. Dwight Driver had no place to go. 
Well, they went to the tailback counter, which takes a little bit longer. You see the jab step? Nobody blocks Leonard Renfro. He comes down inside, is able to get Dwight Driver before he even gets started. Watch Leonard Renfro. Watch him. There's no one blocking him. A missed blocking assignment. He's just able to run in and make the tackle. By the way, the last five Wyoming drives have started in Colorado territory, but they have only one field goal to show for it. Harrison motion to the sideline. Pass is caught after the deflection. That's Max Swenson who made the reception, and it came off his teammates' fingertips. That is enough for the first down and 16 yards. Before we get a look, let me... Okay, we're going to do the replay. I'll, I'll Tom explain Tom the opposite with a good throw. That ball has to be caught. Robert Rivers off his hands, and you see Matt Swenson very alert. There's Tom Ferrantos again. I'll tell you, he's played well tonight, Ron. You have to give him... Uh, he's just done very well. There's the reception by Matt Swenson. They went to a no-back and caught Colorado. Skinner has come back in the ball game at center. He's injured, but he is playing. Ben Ropel has gone to left tackle. Costanza over the middle. He's open at the five. And touchdown, Yarborough. said Wyoming came back extremely fired up in the second half and Michael they are within an extra point of tying this football game. Tom Kronzos has thrown for a lot of yards in the whack. He is having an excellent night but they have why they have Colorado confused a little bit. Ball is snapped but a whistle just prior to that. see what the call is here gonna be procedure against Wyoming there's Tom Kronzos he gets across the route just to see the what defensive backs of Colorado that tangled again when you play man coverage a lot of times and you have crossing routes Colorado defenders collided one fell down that's why he was so wide open Sean Fleming will kick this one from the 15 Plenty of lag, and I'll tell you what, if you just walked into the room, sit down when you hear this one. We are tied, as you look one more time, at Tom Ferranzos throwing the touchdown pass. Wyoming 10, Colorado 10. Oh, oh here we go! Oh! Ha! Good dress, baby. Zombie blitz! How you like me now, baby? Got good life insurance! All in one way! Wally Cleaver's dad was always chewing him out about having respect for money. <laughs> Another thing, Wally, you've got to start having a little respect for money. <laughs> See what I mean? Ward Cleaver would have loved the Toyota Camry. Because now you can save up to $900 on Camry LE's extra value package of options. There are factory to dealer incentives, too. If I know Beaver, he would have been the first one to pocket that money. Do I get to keep the money? Well, of course. <laughs> Good. You want Bud Light, the clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. You can feel it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. It's everything else is just a light. Keep your own life. Everything else is just a light. You gotta shine on. Everything else is just a light. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Wyoming versus Colorado. Is being brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And by Levi's, 505 and 540 jeans for men. 
give us an excellent job. And let's go back and give credit again. We mentioned that uh, the big left tackle, Roseboro, was injured, had to go out. So Kirk Van Ruckel came from left guard. He moved him outside to tackle. Cody Kelly, who's only a sophomore from Glendive, Montana, came in. And those folks right there are down here from Laramie, Wyoming. They might not have thought they were going to have this much to cheer about. Right now, they are locked with the co-defending national champions, Colorado, at 10 apiece. Well, Wyoming comes out of the league I like to refer to as a Rodney Dangerfield league. They don't get any respect in the WAC, and they play good football. Carranzos has really been impressive. He has. Boy, what boys. Fleming with the kickoff. This is going to be short enough to be returned. Charles Johnson for the 10. it out to the 30-yard line. Now, Mike, let's talk a little bit about the Colorado offense and what is not happening right for the Buffaloes. Why? Well, I think the offensive line is confused by the, the Wyoming defense. They've confused them inside with movement, twists, tilts. So now you either got to take the ball outside or on first down, throw a play action. But again, get back to the option. This is that movement that you talked about early on in the telecast. There. Just anything to confuse. Pagan with the deep draw play. Bell reverses it, has five, has ten. First down at the 40-yard line. Pat Glass will make the stop. Don't forget, coming up Thursday night of next week, and it should be some kind of battle. Down at the Orange Bowl, it is Houston at David Klingler taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Mike Patrick and uh, Mike Gottfried will be down there for a 7.30 Eastern time kickoff. I'm so excited about that game. I'm just leaving from here. <laughs> You're not joking. You really are. No, I'm You're going right down. <laughs> Charles Johnson comes back into the lineup. Rico Smith goes out. Mark Henry is the man at the top of your screen, wide to the right and now in motion. He has the crackback block on the pitch, and flags go everywhere because of his block. Play was knocked down for no gain, but that's what two markers came for. They got him on a clip. Came in and hit him low. Cracked him and caught him low and from behind. What I think Colorado has to do right now, Darian Hagen has to be the person to carry this offense. He's the veteran. He has to do it through the air and carrying the football. It's all on this man's shoulders right now to get this offense moving. He's got a young offensive line, young tailback. He's going to have long yardage to do it in. Discussion continues as they talk it over with uh, with Doug Rigby. And, of course, Rigby went out with that. I think he got a stinger on his shoulder. We're glad to see that he is back out there, number 77. You think in the state of Wyoming right now they're glued to their TV sets? <laughs> yeah, I would imagine in Laramie because they are because they were terrible. Against the offense, 15 yards, repeat first down. See, Ron, he can come in high, but he can't go yeah, below the waist. And that's what I was talking about, the reason I called it, a, well, a crack, and that's what he did. Back to my point, they were terribly disappointed. In fact, the coaching staff talked this week that they just didn't know what happened to their Wyoming football team last week. They thought they were better prepared than they showed against Hawaii. Doesn't surprise me. Hawaii's a pretty good football team. I know they got beaten badly by Iowa today, but transition year. New coach, new staff, takes a while situation here first down 25 the line to make is midfield Hagan over the middle wide open is Sean Brown the tight end and he takes it all the way out to the 42 18 yards on the pass play it's a good call by Gary Barnett the offensive coordinator Darren Hagan again he's got to carry the load Sean Brown with his second catch, number 87, 6'2", 245. He's open over the middle. They're playing a lot of too deep coverage, so the tight end will be the player to go to. Very strong. In fact, most think that he should be the uh, the all-Big 8 tight end. But as you said, Nebraska's got a gentleman who's going to rival him. Draw play to Bell. Colonel's a tackler, and they have the first down just like that in two plays. Ball came loose. But he was down. Glass coming again from his free safety position to make the stop. 
Watch the linebacker step up to meet the draw. Good block by number 33, James Hill, which sprung Matt Bell on the draw. Good mix now in the offense. Pass, draw. What you like to do is inside, outside pass. Just keep them off balance. Again to the tight end, Brown. Got it off at 14 yards. Muma on the stop and we mentioned early on in the third quarter we were surprised he hadn't gone to Sean Brown now three times bam 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 I just keep going to Sean Brown watch him here on the release the linebackers are filling real quick on the action Sean Brown's open good play call good good reaction Johnny Mitchell's the tight end in Nebraska and between the two of them they got outstanding tight ends in the big eight Brown three catches 45 yards now quick pass at the 30 that's Charles Johnson. And now, all of a sudden, Colorado is picking it up almost 10 yards of the clip. Now you get the feel they're in sync. What I mean by that is now they seem to be more in the game, running the ball well. Darian Hagan is throwing the ball well, making good choices over the middle of the tight end. Just a little quick pass there. It, again, given his offensive line, things they can do right now, rather than trying to pound it right at him. Six of 12, 65 yards for Hagan. Pull back. 10, 15, has 20, and James Hill will make it first and goal. 24 yards in the carry. Watch what happens to the Wyoming defense. Here's the action, and everybody overruns the play. It allowed James Hill then a missed tackle in the secondary. You get a little tired when you've been on the field this long, and you get a little lazy making tackles. Rigby coming all the way from that right defensive end position. From the four. Bell to the one. Matt Bell is trying to lay claim to that tailback position. Bill McCartney has to be a little worried about his team. He knows he's got a tough schedule. Tough ball game next week against Southwest opponent Baylor. Ooh. Grant Taft may have his best ball club in a decade. Situation here. We're tied at 10. 7.40 left in the third. And the ball is just outside the one. It is second down Colorado. James Hill. So Colorado with an extremely impressive drive, one that at a time had first and 25. They picked that up in two plays. And with the extra point, which has been blocked, they lead by six points. That's Paul Wallace, who came through to block it. So let's go back and look one more time at the replay. Paul Wallace came off the corner on the left side. He's just unblocked. Here you see the touchdown run first, James Hill. Just a good surge. I think what you're seeing right now is a defense of Wyoming is starting to wear out. And the offensive line starting to block on some plays that they're having some success. Again, a good run by James Hill to get the touchdown. Lewenberg and Clint Moore blocking on the play. Lewenberg, of course, the senior All-American. He's out of Kirkwood, Missouri. 6'3", 265 pounds. He's graduated. He's in graduate school, and the coaches say, you bet he is wonderful to have. He's like having another coach on the staff. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten for a follow-up. Adrian. Well, Ron, from the MVP of the Orange Bowl last year to working with ESPN, Charles Johnson. What happened on this last drive? All of a sudden, Colorado came alive. What are they doing differently? Well, they uh, changed the passing scheme a little bit. We had gone away from running passes off of the option and just taking five-step drops and reading little scenes in the zone, eight-yard pops. Charles, earlier today on game day, you were talking about that brotherhood that you miss out here. How difficult is that going to be to replace, and how much are you missing this right now? I miss it very much, and it's very difficult to replace. I mean, not very arenas do you get in a situation where uh, through adversity and good times, you know, you, you have the same friends. 
Looking forward to a job in television, maybe? <laughs> I'll see. Good luck in law school. Ron. Okay, thanks very much. Decided to turn down his senior year. I hope you saw that story this morning on game day, saying that academics were that important to him after being the MVP in the Orange Bowl. Had a year left. Going to wrap it up in December, then go to law school. And again, this kickoff out of the back of the end zone to Timmy Brando. What is brewing right now? Oh, do, do I have some shockers for you and Mike, uh, Ron? Take a look at this. Tulsa, they went 3-8 and eight last year. They're already 2-0 and oh this year. They beat Oklahoma State 13-7. SMU, Tom Rossley in his debut. Forrest Gregg's now the AD. They're leading 3-0 over Arkansas. 79 total yards for the Hogs in this game. Wow. It's I don't know which one surprises me more. It's easier right now. I don't say it's easy. I shouldn't say that. But it's, it was more difficult to build a program 10 years ago with a scholarship reduction. You have a chance right now. Quick out pass. Out just shy of the 30-yard line. His amaker Harris had come in motion, and they threw to him. He's going to have about nine and a half yards on the play. To follow up your point, and, and the, that point is well taken. It does well, you, take longer, doesn't it? Well, you look at Memphis State beating Southern Cal. You look at Louisville season they had last year. Uh, it's just easier now because of the reduction. If you do a good job recruiting and keep your players, there's a bigger pool out there to recruit from. So you have a chance at every school to develop a winner. Second and short. Jeff Bruner, the sophomore from Sterling, Colorado, was inching back and forth. On the defense, five yards. First down. Well, at the conclusion of tonight's ball game, Mike and I will be picking Visa players of the game, one from Wyoming and one from Colorado. And not all precincts are reporting as far as Visa players on this one tonight. A lot of candidates on both sides of the ball. 16 to nothing, Colorado, or 16 to 10, Colorado leads it. Midway third period. Pass in the flat. Rivers turns the corner, and that's what I was talking about off the top of the telecast. They just want to get him the football someplace to get one on one, and he's quick enough to break it. Against man coverage, underneath man coverage, watch the motion, man come in, watch the pick right here. There's the pick, Robert Rivers gets the ball, now he has to make somebody miss. There's the miss and picks up good yards. Ronnie Bradford ran by him. You know the difficult thing and also what could be dangerous about that play, the way they throw it, it's away from the line of scrimmage. If he drops it, that's a fumble, Mike. It is, right? I tell you, I think something that looms big now is that missed extra point. You're right. Second and inches. Straight ahead with the running play. They have the first down plus three. Right driver. Beaker on the stop for Colorado. Joe Tiller has to be proud of his football team and his coaching staff for what they've accomplished tonight. I know it's early still. Third quarter, 621 to go. But this team has played with a lot of poise tonight. And I, I'm impressed with what I see coming off a loss. And I think it all starts with number 18. I think Tommy has just done a magnificent job. He has had total poise regardless of the duress. They fake the draw. Great ball handling. Looking long. Throws the short pass and it's completed for 38. I'm telling you, he had a man deep on a post route and he was there. Right now, 16 yard boys coming back saying, brother, if you could have found me, it was six. Tom Cronzo says, I'm running for my life. But uh, <laughs> Tom Cronzo does a very good job faking the football here to the tailback. Look at that. Look at the draw that he has on the defense. Now he's looking for somebody open in the flat. The tight end came open late. But now Robert Rivers, who's a threat, just can't grab it right away, but makes the catch for a good yardage. Rivers only weighs 170, and that was figures. Well, he took he a really hit. it, yeah. See the numbers between uh, Carantos and Hagen tonight. But the sideline has it complete to Swenson. And the tight end right on the marker, very close to the first down, inside the 30-yard line. Well, this offense is just keeping uh, Colorado off balance, and they've run the football just enough to get their attention with the draw. Remember the draw. It's been very effective because it slowed down the, the rush. Here he's going to hit his tight end, Tom Carantos. 
Watching the back set up. He's got time. It's just five-step drop. Good throw to his tight end. Number 88, Matt Swenson, turns up the football field. They have the Colorado defense off balance right now with all their formations, with all the things they're doing, the draw. They have a good game plan at this point. Mike, as they bring the chain from across the way, Mitch Rosegar is back in on this series, number 70, who was injured earlier. And that's going to be a Wyoming first down. So Ben Ropel has gone back to left guard, and Skinner, who was injured in the first half, has come back in. Again, it's been a cumulatively gutsy performance. They've had to play because they don't have many backups. I'll tell you what, watch the Colorado defense at this point. I figure Mike Hankwitz is going to do some blitzing right now. He can't sit back because the receivers are getting open versus his zone, so I look for him to start firing some linebackers to try to put some pressure on Tom Francis to make him make a decision quickly. Well, let's see if Colorado does, in fact, try to make something happen. Blitz from the outside. Carranzo's going to be caught from behind, and that's Jeff Groner. There's Hankwitz, Mike, the defensive coordinator, and that is the fifth sack by Colorado in this ball game. Well, Mike Hankwitz did just that. He sent Chris Hudson on a weak corner fire. He's, he knows he has to put pressure on Tom Francis to try to get him moving around just a little. Fire. Fire. You bring the corner off the side. You look at the corner when you line up and you think he's in pass covered, and all of a sudden, off the inside receiver, you see where 47's lined up. He just fired in after Tom Francis. I figure he'll come after him again. Second and three, and there they go. And they run the reverse. Oh, my goodness, his rivers really wrecked at the 25-yard line as he took a double pop, and he just given up so much size. Thomas and also Chad Brown combining on the stuff. They brought both corners on this one. They fired from both sides. Watch number six fire through and try to Eric Hamilton. He's in good shape for the reverse. He just makes the misses the uh, tackle. So, again, a good job by Robert Rivers, but they're trying to heat him up. Watch the hit. Robert Rivers, nice tackle. They'll pressure him again, Ron, on defense. Third down, the line to make, the Colorado 18. They fake the reverse, looking for the end zone. He's there, and a great defensive play, number two figures. Oh, my goodness. Yarbrough had him beat. Just needed a little more air under the football. But I'll tell you, Deion Figures is one of the best defensive backs in the Big Eight. Watch all this fake and Tom Francis does. Look, he's got him open. Yarbrough's open. Look at Deion Figures just reach up there and make a play. Oh, Mike, you're right. Just an ounce more of air. We're going to have a, the field goal attempt of 32 yards. Sean Fleming from the 32. Ball is down. Kick plenty of distance. And the 42-yarder is good. So let's take a break. 325 left in the third, our new score. Colorado 16 and Wyoming 13. Judy, there's something I want to ask you. Jackie. My name is Jackie. <gasps> close. But close just isn't close enough unless you're playing Keno from the Colorado Lottery. Okay, we can stop if you need to. Oh, I, I got it. We're almost there now. I, I got it. Hey, hold your hand. Yeah. Uh, I got it. I got it. Close. Oh! But close just isn't close enough unless you're playing Keno from the Colorado Lottery. Get ready for the September pay-per-view fight of the month. Lopez, Mitchell, Taylor, Freeland. Three spectacular bouts. IBF lightweight champion Tony the Tiger Lopez takes on Brian Mitchell. The last time they met it was a draw. This time it's personal. Mark Breland versus Jorge Vaca, and Olympic gold medalist Meldrick Taylor takes on a top contender. Don't miss the September fight of the month, live Friday, September 13th, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Call your cable operator and order this pay-per-view triple header. Everybody, I'm Chris Berman, getting set to bring you ESPN's Tuesday Night Baseball. Wait, wait a minute. What is the Energizer Bunny doing in my spot? Thank you. Like I was saying, we have a doubleheader for you every Tuesday, the early game from the East Coast, then the late game from out here at the Hotel California. Plus, we update all of the action around the major leagues. Get back, get back, get back, 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 back. Gone. Is there nothing sacred anymore? Well, our 
Toyota Leadership Award winners are for Wyoming Quentin Skinner. He's a graduate student, carries a 3-2 GPA in range management. He's a spokesman on drug and alcoholism in Laramie. And for Colorado, it's Jay Lewenberg, who is also a graduate student. He's from Kirkwood, Missouri. Jay is a diabetic, and he speaks at schools to children with diabetes, as well as being a volunteer in the Say No to Drugs program. Also, he's active in the Special Olympics. Toyota, proud to donate $1,000 to each school general scholarship fund for academic excellence and community service. We're talking to Tom Carranzos, Ron, and I know Tom probably is down because he knew he, if he just put a little bit more on that football, he'd had a touchdown. Well, this is what he's done since the first quarter. Only two of seven then, but since then, 12 of 19 and 128 yards. Line drive on the kickoff, Charles Johnson. At the 30, now the 31, and is ridden out of bounds. Iowa winning big over Hawaii today. Alabama rolls, we'll have them next week against Florida. game between Ohio State and Arizona won by Ohio State Carlos Snow five carries 16 yards and no touchdowns Mike and I know that was a question of yours with Smith deciding he was not going to play I think Carlos Snow is a great tailback he ran a touchdown a kickoff to turn 100 yards on us a couple years ago when I was in Pittsburgh five yards offside repeat the kick but I heard Lee Corso earlier and Chris Fowler saying he was hampered by an injury this week so it may have affected him Maybe a little surprising that uh, that they're going to make them kick over again because Colorado was going to have the ball at the 31 yard line which generally is thought of as decent field position. Bobby Simmons right there works with a kickoff return. He was at West Virginia under Don Nalen for many years. From Bowling Green. Outstanding coach talking to Bill McCartney. Here, here come the special teams. It also gives us an opportunity. I mentioned the Alabama game next week down to Florida. That's a week from tonight. So, wow, when you look at that schedule on Thursday and Saturday, the games that are going to be on the primetime games on Thursday, Houston at Miami, and then on Saturday night, Mike, Alabama at Florida. I'm with you. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited. 8 o'clock Eastern time on that Miami game on Thursday. Johnson and Hudson back in a dual safety. We'll see if Colorado takes it back beyond the 31 of this one. Carl Johnson. Yeah, he's going to get an extra five yards, just what the penalty was. Coaches knew exactly what they were doing. Aichima <laughs> on the stop for Wyoming. You can really hear that contact down on the field. Here's the situation, in case you have just joined us. Colorado, 16, Wyoming, 13. We were tied at 10, and Colorado came back with an extremely impressive drive in the second half. In fact, the drive where they hit the tight end three different times for 45 yards, then scored the touchdown. Part of the drive also, they had a first and 25, and they picked it up in just two plays. Hagan rolls, has it incomplete. Rico Smith is the man he wanted at the 50. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, I just spoke with the Wyoming team physician. The injury to Tom Carranzo is really kind of a non-injury. He's taken a couple of hard hits. They're massaging the back of his neck. They say it's no particular stinger, no problem with his right shoulder. They say he's ready to go, and we'll go in just a moment. Tom Carranzo has had a really outstanding ball game, and you can see why he holds so many Wyoming passing records. Hagan now 6 of 13 throwing 65 yards and for the first time tonight he is going to be sacked as Rigby bit number 77 the senior from Crete Nebraska comes through to make the stop and that's back around the 26 yard line. Very deep drop by Darren Hagan there and there just was nothing there. Doug Rigby did a great job of coming up and beating the offensive tackle. Crete Nebraska. He escaped going to the University of Nebraska. So, Michael, we look.
look at a situation, the line of scrimmage is the 26. Going to be third down. And it is about 20 and a half yards to pick up the first down. The line to make is the 46. Hagan, deep set, deep over the middle. Knocked away, nice defensive play on the part of number 19, Ty Mola. Put the fullback in the wing set and took him down the middle of the field. Watch Darren Hagan setting up. He's looking for James Hill, number 33. Ty Muma, he's open, but Ty Muma comes back late with a good defensive play. Robert Rivers is the deep man. The national champions are being pushed. They really are. Berger has had an excellent night, an average of 45 per boot, and he almost took too much time on that one. Oh, and here's a mistake right here. Rivers did not come up and feel the ball, and it cost him 10, if not close to 15 yards. Let's go to Timmy Brando for another update. Tim, what do you have now? Ron, we can't forget about number one, and Casey Weldon, certainly a Heisman candidate. He had three touchdowns, 20 of 28 for 249 yards against Tulane, 38 to 11. They get Western Michigan next week, and then Michigan. There is a difference. <laughs> You know, Tim, one point should be made, though. The place that Bobby Bowden has had so many problems in the last three years has been those first couple of ball games, and uh, they have taken care of business early this year. They have not let anybody slip up on them. Pass over the middle. Has his man. Oh, incomplete. What a stick at the 45-yard line. Amaker Harris almost had his head taken off by Eric Hamilton. Amaker Harris is a tailback that they'll use as a wide receiver, motion him out. You're going to see this throw by Tom Francis. This is an excellent throw to Amaker Harris, but Eric Hamilton, number six, was a runaway. He was as fast as Ralphie right there, the mascot. Maybe Watch reckless. him. Look at this. Maybe he is reckless. Wow. Too. Mike, that ball was throw so accurately thrown it hit him in the, in the face mask first. Went through his hands. Browns is going to go on top again. Harris can't hold on at the 35. It's Bradford on the cover, and it's a good job of cover. You can't do it much better. Watch this throw. It's going to come right into your living room. They're making Amaker Harris. They're moving him outside and, and running him away from the starting corners. Watch this throw coming right to you, just off the fingertips. Coverage by Ronnie Bradford. Show a couple of near misses by Wyoming. And the most important thing right now is they send three wide receivers left. It is a third and ten. Carranza has his tight end Swinson, and he drops it at the 35-yard line. Beaker had the cover, but he should have caught that football. They dodged a bullet there because Greg Beaker might have been holding Matt Swenson on that play. But what Colorado or what Wyoming did so well there is they put three receivers to one side, put their tailback Amaker Harris on the other side, one on one versus Ronnie Bradford. Good strategy by Larry Kopit, the offensive coordinator. Fleming to punt, and Hagen, who has not really had an opportunity to return one tonight, is back deep. He's got one for 10. And he's going to get a chance on this one. Very high the 33 and a flag from down deep to the 43 yard line 42 yards in the punt at 10 yards on the return and let's see what this marker is going to be well join Chris Fowler and Lee Corso for the first word on another busy college football Saturday that's the 1130 Eastern time with game day and then Louisville versus Ohio State at 1230 then we'll travel down to the horseshoe for that one That'll be at 12.30. Then followed at 7.30 in the evening in the primetime game. Mike and I are going to be in Gainesville for a battle of top 20 teams. And in fact, they're expecting the largest team in the history of that state because last year we did that uh, final game there. They were tearing down the end of the stadium, adding seats at the University of Florida. Cliff on the flag. post scrimmage enforcement, 15 yards. Penalty from the end of the kick. So you can bet that... Things will be rocking the Florida field. First game mistakes in the kicking game. Several penalties. Oh, 
have happened to Colorado in their kicking situation. Bill McCartney. Always been told that when someone walks with their arms crossed, that means I don't want to talk to you. Right now, Bill, I don't want to talk to too many people. I, he can't be real pleased with the way his ball club uh, has performed here tonight. They lead, but only by three, with 1.37 left in the third. Chuck Snowden is coming to the backfield. As the pass goes complete, Rico Smith spins his way out to the 35-yard line, and that is more than enough for the first down. It's been documented, but the job that Bill McCartney has done at Colorado is, is something short of uh, fabulous because he took a program, they were down, lost early, but he stayed with it, kept his ball club together, and brought them a national championship. Hagan very quickly after the 15-yard gain, works it back to the near side, Westbrook. And he will have a gain of five to the 40. Ty Muma, again coming from that safety spot, there to make the tackle for Wyoming. Just a quick passing game, three-step drop. They've got one-on-one -on, -one on both sides because of Wyoming trying to stop the run with the other nine people. Rico Smith comes in with the play as Charles Johnson goes to the sideline. Colorado using those wideouts to shuttle the plays. He just has an uncanny ability to take the football down and take off his speed, his quickness from stop right now to when he starts, he just gains momentum. Something you might look for, fans might look for right now, is he's throwing those quick hitches for success. Maybe a hitch and go uh, out on the outside. Pump it and then go. Pump it and go. And Charles Johnson is split wide to the right, but they go with the running play. Right ahead is James Hill, and that one will be stopped after a gain of only a couple. That could be the last play of this third quarter as the clock ticks down. What has been a magnificent evening after an ugly afternoon of rain. It now has turned cool with the temperature down in the low 50s. Very pleasant. And Colorado is going to head to the fourth quarter with a lead of three. So let's take a timeout. Buffalo's 16 to 13. A trip for two to the thrifty car rental holiday bowl including five days in sunny san diego you'll see a great game visit sea world and drive away in a 1992 chrysler lebaron convertible to enter stop by any thrifty car rental location or fill out the official entry form in select monday editions of usa today or simply print your name and address on a three by five card and mail to this address round trip air transportation provided by us air I haven't seen any alternative. I don't either. We have to go in. Have we gotten the parents yet? I have them on the phone, Doctor. They're out of the country. Fax them consent form. Stat. That's the only thing we're waiting on. I don't know it. Okay. I've got it. Any minute. Doctor, I've got the parents' signatures. Excellent. Here we go. Dex facsimile, one of a wide range of business communication solutions from Fujitsu, the global computer and communications company. And here's defender Bill Jackson warming up for his title bout with the challenger, the Stork Chocolate Reason. And the fight is on. Oh, it looks like the Stork Chocolate Reason may triumph this time, but hey, Bill shows plenty of staying power. He's no quitter, and yeah, the tide has turned. Bill Jackson has him up against the ropes. Bill Jackson has licked the Stork Chocolate Reason. And now he's enjoying his victory. Stork Chocolate Reason, the chocolate challenge. You could call one company to take your package to an address across town. And you could find somebody to take your package to any address cross-country. Then you could call a third outfit that could take your package overseas. And yet another that could take your package overnight. But there's only one company you could call if you only wanted to make one call. It started with a need. A severe weather watch is in effect. Ooh, what time did they leave? I was on my way to Mom's, just me and the kids, when it happened. A need to combine handling power and added peace of mind in a family car. 
automobile magazine called it a new standard by which all minivans would be judged. It handled beautifully. We call it Previa. It's a Toyota. They just drove up. And it's like nothing you've ever experienced. Well, we're having sodas and pastries after the game. Uh, would you like to come to the house? That's what he's saying, right? No, I think what he's arguing about is that the middle guard, the tilt guard for Wyoming is holding the center so that he can't go up on the linebacker. Total yards in this ball game. Wyoming, 216. Colorado, 231. Hagan, quick pass over the middle again. Sean Brown, and the tight end will have the first down plus five. Tom Kramer is there defensively. Well, that's three catches for Sean Brown. It's pitch and catch when they want to go to the tight end. Here's Darren Hagan again. Look at him. He's wide open. Safety has to make the tackle. It's a fourth catch. Tackle was made by Time Yuma. Well, Brown didn't catch any in the first half, but now has four in the second half. In fact, three on that last scoring drive. Snowden, left side, goes for a couple. Darrell Drake, who is a junior out of Omaha, comes up to make the stop. Drake's an interesting story. He left in 1990, would have been a starter. He now has come back and has regained his starting position. He is in majoring in architecture. This is the area of the field where they like to try to get Rico Smith on a post, move inside, and back to the corner. Well, they got their opportunity. He is top of the screen to the short side of the field. And Smith who they're looking for, and I'll tell you what, the fullback, James Hill, came up and knocked down a pass that was not even intended for him. I think James Hill got in the wrong route there <laughs> because they had the wide receiver, Rico Smith, open. He had just uh, hooked back inside. Watch this. Watch Rico Smith. He's open. He's just going to go down and curl at about 10 yards, but James Hill gets in the throwing lane and thinks it's for him. Can't fault him unless he, he's obviously wrong, ran the wrong route, and then poor Rico gets hit. Hey, Rico, I started to say, Rico then got hit, and he will say to Hill, who's looking up for, hey, listen, you got me whacked, and we didn't get the pass complete. Third down. They need the 29. Hagan, too high over the middle, and he had a couple of guys breaking free, but just threw it a little bit quickly. Westbrook is the man he wanted. See, I'm not sure who he was throwing to. He was too high for Westbrook, 81, and then he was too short for Rico Smith, and both were open. It was a tweener. That's what I mean. He had both of them breaking clear. Couldn't make up his mind. Was it a seven iron or an eight iron? He used the seven too much. Berger, who has been outstanding tonight for the Buffaloes, very high kick. This one headed to the far side of the field. And it's going to take a Colorado bounce and go out of bounds at the 11-yard line. So let's take a break. 13:42 left in our ball game. Buffaloes by three. Another wimpy sandwich. Not me. I've got Vintage Farms Deli Loaf. It's got real sliced meat chunks. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate Life. Financial strength you can count on. Shine a light on you. Shine a light on me. Keep your body light shining for everyone to see. Shine a light on this. Shine a light on that. Oh, shining all the others is with more when you're looking good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never lets you down. You can taste it, you can feel it. You know you got it right. Everything else is just the light.
ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Wyoming versus Colorado, is being brought to you by Subaru. It's what you drive. Welcome back to Boulder, Colorado. It's the opening of the 91 season. Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Carson. And there's the story. 16 to 13. See if Wyoming, nope, no draw play as they send him in motion to the sideline. Over the middle, almost intercepted. Nice defensive play as Chris Hudson. He was at nickelback, and he has had an outstanding game. He really has. Watch Tom Kronz is back up here. He's looking to the trip side, throws a little too late, and Chris Hudson steps in and makes the incompletion. Here would be a good draw call right now. 14 of 30, one interception, one touchdown. 146 yards for Tom Carranzas tonight. Senior from Great Falls, Montana. They fake the draw. He is in big trouble and down at the three. Ron Wolford. Two outside linebackers met at the quarterback, Chad Brown and Ron, Ron Wolfolk. They're going to fake the counter play, trying to get Tom Francis outside, but there was no fake for Ron Wolfolk. He just can't ex escape, and Chad Brown comes in and finishes him off. That's six sacks for the Colorado defense tonight, and they lead by only three. So can you imagine if had they not had this kind of effort tonight? This is a big interception area right here. Now, third and long. Stop at the one. Chad Brown was the first man there. Now, the most important thing for Wyoming, they've got a great kicker in Sean Fleming, but he's not going to have his full 15-yard drop, Mike. It's only going to be about 12 or 11 and a half yards. Well, Colorado will have to decide whether they want to try to rush and block it or set up a return with Darian Hagan. Either way, you're in pretty good shape. If you're going to block it, Darian Hagan makes the catch. He's still going to make a couple yards in good field position. Keep an eye on Fleming. Cannot take a step back. That would be a safety. Hagan on the run at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, and down to the 4. was 38 yards he just returned to 37. Oh it's an option play that's why I say why why not let him return the kick he's exciting back there that's just one more option play that he's running the ball game watch him he is so elusive so quick almost breaks it three returns for 57 yards and look who got him 42 Sean Fleming who just punted Snowden oh my goodness is he hit and that's Corey Tallis I'll tell you what, on the defensive side of the ball, that young man gets my vote at 195 pounds to be playing middle backer against linemen that outweigh him by 70 and 80 pounds. That's something. You're so right. He's played so well tonight, 6'2", 190. Where you have a problem now, defensive Colorado, they have the option threat down here, and they have the threat of throwing the ball on a play action to Sean Brown. By the way, Talis has eight tackles of the ball game, seven solo. There's the pick. Snowden gathers it, and he is whacked out at the two-yard line. Won't get in. Boy, a great catch. He ended up hitting his own wide receiver. Chuck yep. Snowden, watch this play by Darren Hagan. Again, the option's tough to defend here on the goal line. Just He's just, look at the catch that he made. Now he'll run into his own wide receiver. Guess who again? That's Glass. He's really a hitter. And he didn't start last week. The injury to Brian Balker, severe ankle, gives him a chance to play for Joe Tiller. And that's number nine. That's Charles Johnson who is down. And he is the teammate that Coach Godfrey was talking about that he collided with. I'll tell you what, all the credit in the world to Snowden. That ball could have wound up on the ground with a recovery by Wyoming. As I look at Bill McCartney, I know what's going through his mind. He knows they have to get in here. He just cannot keep allowing the Wyoming to be, a, be with them in this game. 
here's where now, if you're the defense, the, the person who becomes, I think, the most important receiver is Sean Brown. Eric, Darren Hagan, some kind of play action fake where he gets to the corner where it's the run pass possibility to Sean Brown on some type of crossing route. So the situation, it is third down. Colorado has a goal to go, and the ball is just inside the three-yard line. So let's take the tip from Mike and see if we keep an eye on number 87. That's Sean Brown, the tight end. And he will line up on the right side. Two tight ends, either tight end. Fake it. Hagan will walk it in. Touchdown, Colorado. There is a flag down at the five-yard line. Embry had moved on the left side. I saw that. Did anyone else on the interior move? We have illegal procedure on the play. Wow. That's exactly what he said. Embry, no, to, to go back to that point, yeah, the tight end can move, but not at that juncture, not just before the ball is stepped. No. He didn't have the count to get reset. No, he didn't get reset. And again, it, Colorado had just what they wanted. Bill McCartney wanted Darren Hagan on the outside with a run pass possibility, and he ran it in. Colorado now seven penalties, 61 yards. On the black. Touchdown is not allowed. Replay the down. Well, the scoreboard is taking for granted that they have scored because we, it is 16 to 13, but the big board had gone to 22. Now they have just changed it again. i come back with something similar. Same thing, same play action. Try to get it to the tight end. Third down and goal. Hagan with the play action. Looking for the tight end. Incomplete. Just misses him, just barely. Oh, you're exactly right. They crossed the tight end and Brown was there. Looks as though Mikey might have thrown it just a little bit late. He had him open. He did throw it late, and he just didn't throw it well. Watch Sean Brown. Watch the other tight end's going to come across. Embry, there he clears. The linebacker tries to pick him up. He's wide open. And I'll tell you, the play of the linebacker there where he knocked him off stride it did as much to make that an incompletion as anything. Jimmy Harper with the field goal attempt. 25 yards for the near hash as a flag goes down, and he just missed it. And that's going to be offside. It's all Wyoming. Uh, Wyoming moved. Now you get an interesting situation for Bill McCartney. Not really. That was fourth down, and he missed it. You know he's going to take the penalty. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Black. Oh, no. they're going to call Colorado. Hey, somebody had to move. You know what I was saying was if he got the penalty, then he has a choice of whether he wants to kick the field goal or try to get a touchdown. Watch number 66. Just barely, just before the snap of the ball, and we, we have to believe that's who they're flagging, Mike. Yeah, he drew the defensive line of Wyoming. That's, on that move. that's the freshman, Clint Moore, starting his first varsity game tonight. Now the discussion. I, don't th I think they have another chance to kick field goal because it happened before the snap of the right. ball. So the penalty has to be. Uh, Wyoming, what you're saying is Wyoming cannot decline the penalty. Right. So now a 30-yard attempt. Plus, he gives Jim Harper a second chance. Just should miss just a second ago. It is blocked in the middle. Harper goes for it on the ground, and Wyoming has come up big again. Paul Wallace got the block. That was the kicker's fault. He didn't get any height at all in that football. That's when you take that T away. Sometimes you try to overcompensate. You try to line drive it. Didn't get any height on it. Jimmy Harper, number 16. Watch his kick, unless we get a muff on the, on the hole. See, no height at all. Wallace from the outside, and he just had a clean block. Ben McCartney's trying to move himself to try to get that in. Situation, 10-36 left in the ball game. Wyoming still hanging around. They're down by only three. driver to the right side and he'll take it to the 20 for a couple. Brian Diet, the big sophomore from Arvada, Colorado, is there to make the stop. And you can see driver 
clapping and looking toward the bench as they wait for the play to come in. This Wyoming club knows that they are in a magnificent position to knock off the defending co-national champion. Driver, 12 carries now, 66 yards, and he is now the game's top rusher. Quick out, that's Amateur Harrison again. Took his eye off the football to hit him right in the face now. Dion figures had the cover on him. Ron, when the offensive staff of Colorado gets together and watch the tapes tomorrow, the one thing that's going to bother them most is they've had great field position all night. They've had so many opportunities to score. They've wore down Wyoming defensively, but they just did not take advantage of it. But for Ronzos, here's a number he would like to see change. In fact, he's going to have to. They have now missed six passes in a row. Third down, the line to make the 28. Carranzas, he's got him. He stepped out of bounds, and Mike, he caught that out of bounds. When you see the replay, they're going to give it to him at the 38. I believe Yarbrough came down with his left foot out of bounds, right down below us. I agree with you. I think he did, but he did it on the sideline of Wyoming, so it might not get called. <laughs> Watch the throw by Tom Carranzas. It's a fade route. They stopped him from going inside. Let's see. No, no. He no, might be no. In. That's he's a, in. That's a great call, but they are a great no call by the official. My apologies yes, to the mine brigade too. officials. Mine too. That's he was right there. You know John Erickson handles the officials in basketball, but uh, I don't know who does in football. But uh, they've done a nice job tonight. Yes. Straight ahead on the running play, a driver will be stopped for no gain. Jeff Rohner defensively is there to make the stop. It'll bring up a second down. Just for the near sideline, Jones comes in. And also number six, Dennis Ross, the senior wide receiver. He's from Waco, Texas. Played junior college football at Northeast Oklahoma Junior College. He is another big play guy. gets it away incomplete and Beaker was holding on to Jones and because the ball was not catchable no flag was thrown now it's going to be third down and ten Greg Beaker had a couple of problems with crossing routes Mike Jones was open but just out of ball thrown football Greg Beaker's the leader of this defense Cunnington comes in at fullback he still doesn't have a varsity carry uh, he has moved around quite a bit. He's formerly a quarterback. They use him as a blocker primarily. He's number 44 behind Carranza. I wouldn't think he's going to get his first one now. No, I, I wouldn't say so in third and ten. Carranza drills it incomplete, and he just had to get rid of it. He had pressure all over him. Chad Brown threw him to the turf just as he was throwing. Carranza can't be upset with himself. He just couldn't wait any longer to get that one away. Rivers is who he wanted. And again, it's Darian Hagan. See Fleming's numbers on the night as Hagan drops off to the 20. This is the best punt of the night. Driving Hagan all the way back inside the 10 to the 6. Did he outkick his coverage? Hagan pushed out of bounds near the 35-yard line. And now he was hit late. One flag comes in. And now two flags. <laughs> 54 yards in the kick and 29 yards on the return. Fleming. 
So let's take a break. 8.39 left to play. Colorado, 16 to 13. This is Milan Henelichka, goaltender for the Czechoslovakian Olympic hockey team. He's taken hundreds of stitches, suffered eight fractures, and has even been knocked unconscious. Yet he once went 11 consecutive periods without being scored on. But if you think it's tough to get something by him, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Win a trip for two to the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl, including five days in sunny San Diego. You'll see a great game, visit SeaWorld, and drive away in a 1992 Chrysler LeBaron convertible. To enter, stop by any Thrifty Car Rental location or fill out the official entry form in select Monday editions of USA Today. Or simply print your name and address on a 3x5 card and mail to this address. Round trip air transportation provided by US Air. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them. I can tell you exactly how that feels. Sixteen to thirteen. If you're surprised, well, there are a lot of people at this stadium that are. Here's a big play. Watch what? the tight end on the left, Mike. He moved. He doesn't get back. He did get back, but he—that's where the call was on the tight end. It Sean nullified Andrew. the touchdown. And the other thing is, maybe also we should run that at full speed because that would show even better that he did not get back for the full game. So they slow motion it showed him a little bit longer there. Here they come with a reverse. Pitch back comes to Eric Mitchell. Oh, and he gets racked. And now one marker and now a second. We're going to have a clip against Colorado. And the second one, either face mask or Paul Wallace, chopped him a little high. Setting live ball foul. Cliff on the black. Five yard face mask. White replay first down. When you run a reverse, sometimes the offensive lineman will be in a position. Watch if you see Tom Kramer, number 58, who get who will get clipped. Here's the reverse coming. Almost dropped the ball. Here's Tom Kramer. There's the block. Got him from behind. And then there'll be a late call out of bounds, which will nullify it. Face mask. First down, Buffaloes from the 48-yard line. Hagan pumped once. Trying to run out of harm's way, and he'll have a couple. Let's see where they spot him out at around the 46-yard line. You know something, Mike? Sometimes I think it's, it's not that he's a bad passer. If I were a defensive coach, I'd want him to throw. That's where I wouldn't want him right there, because you're all fouled up defensively. That's when he breaks the big one up. He's throwing some good passes here in the second half. But don't you agree as far as his scramble and, and that's what he really hurts him? I'd worry about him in all areas. <laughs> 16 to 13, Colorado. 8-24 left to play. Hagan now 9 of 20, 97 yards. Sets, drills the ball, and he is caught at the 35-yard line by Charles Johnson. You know what? That ball was almost, that's about as close as you can play it by Edmund. And he still caught the football. Well, I like Darren Hagan. I like what, uh, what what he can do with the football. Here he steps, resets, and throws the curl route at about 18 yards. Look at that throw to Charles Johnson. And that was well defended by Eric Edmond. Yes, it was. Talents made the stop. New set of downs, this time from the 30. Drop play back against the grain with Paul. And he's down to the 19-yard line. First and 10, Buffalo. Talk 
talked a little bit about the power eye offense that Colorado want runs. They motioned out. Here they're going to run a little slow sprint draw, and the backers overran it. Corey Talich almost came back and made the play. He just got himself out of position a little bit. But when you run a power eye offense, you can run the power game off of it, the wishbone off of, offense all of it, and defenses only have a week to prepare for it. It's difficult. Ty Muma made that stop. And again, a new set of downs. As Scott Phillips has come in at fullback, but the handoff goes to 33 James Hill, the sophomore out of Colorado Springs. Mike, does anybody else in the country run the power set or the power eye the way exactly the way Colorado does? I don't think so. Bill McCartney, when he first came into the league, was throwing the ball. Then he went to the wishbone offense and gradually came to the power eye because he knows he's got a power running game and he's got the option game with it. And he's really sold on this offense. Well, it's got him 22 victories in the last two years at a co-national championship. I can understand why he's sold on it. Second down and eight. Hagan. For the end zone, it is tipped and caught for the touchdown. Mark Henry. position for cover both times the ball was caught Mark Edmund can't play it any better he tipped it Mark Henry's the power eye guy he can block he can run the football and a great catch good concentration extra point attempt is good so let's take one more look at what we're talking about Eric Edmund in perfect position he will tip this pass by Hagen but watch what happens it is tipped Mark Henry catches it for the touchdown Kitchen Mart is the only name you need to know for kitchen and bath remodeling. We offer the most extensive selection of high fashion faucets, sinks, and countertops in Colorado. Kitchen Mart is proudly featuring a full line of fine cabinetry from Plato, the intelligent choice in custom cabinetry for every room in your home. If you've dreamed of transforming your home into a work of art, call Kitchen Mart today at 744-2350 or stop by 1001 West Bayot. Kitchen Mart, we make your dreams come true. Ah, another quiet Sunday evening. Just when you thought Sunday night was going to be boring, TNT packs some NFL action for a little Sunday night crunch. So tune in to Denver's best KAZY 106.7 with Joe Mama in the morning for the chance to win great prizes. Because Sunday, two teams who love to hate each other meet in the jungle. The Oilers versus the Bengals. The NFL on TNT Sunday night. Lock it out. Start your NFL Monday. NFL Monday Night Magazine and NFL Monday Night Matchup get you ready for the big game. Each week, beginning at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Ahead on Sports Center, Monica Sellis meets Martina in the U.S. Open final while Jimmy Connors tries to fool Father Time again. Mississippi State takes on Texas with upset on its mind, and the Dodgers try to cling to first. I'm Jack Edwards. Join Tom Meese and me at 11.30 Eastern. Number five, he's in the left corner here. Darren Hankins rolling out. You'll see number five come into the picture. Mark, Mark Henry runs by him, but watch him recover and almost stop the play being a touchdown. Now look at this catch. You talk about concentration. <laughs> Great catch by Mark Henry. So the scoring drive. Five plays, 48 yards, a minute, 47 seconds. And Henry, that's his first reception of the night for Henry. And he grabs it in for the touchdown. Very popular player. You can see on the sidelines his teammates gathering to congratulate him. And on the near side, Wyoming kind of looking at the ground thinking, hey, we probably deserve better than this. Right now they're down by 10, under 7 to play. Berger picks it off. Robert Rivers for the goal line. And out to the 23 and Tim Brando. What new do you have for us? More on the shocker, gentlemen, from Little Rock, Arkansas. SMU now has the ball on their own 28-yard line, under four minutes to play. Arkansas leading the game 10-6. We'll keep you posted. 
BYU and UCLA underway. Detmer's already been intercepted. Tommy Maddox, a touchdown pass to La Chapelle. It is 14-3 Bruins at the Rose Bowl. We'll keep you in touch with what's going on in Little Rock. Back to Ron and Mike. Okay, thank you. That's interesting. Two Texas quarterbacks playing for UCLA and, uh, and BYU in that game. Detmer is in a rut right now, Mike. They lost the supporting cast. He, it's going to take a while to get his receivers back and running back. He needs some help. Toronto drills it, has it complete. At the 27 of the marker comes in. Robert Rivers made the catch. I really don't know who has shown me more guts tonight. It, it, it's maybe a cold thing between Rivers and Talis. Rivers only weighs 170. And he'll come back to the middle and just not give it a second thought. They played hard, Ron. I mean, you really uh, take my hat off to the coaches, the staff, Tom Carrasco, that just done an outstanding job. They really have. They 15 really have. for 33, 164 yards and a touchdown. And it's not over yet. He can engineer a drive. He's still got 640 on the clock with three timeouts left. I was talking about Ty Detmer. He lost Chris Smith, the tight end, Matt Bellini, the wide receiver. It'll take a while. Joe Tiller. There's the face mask right there. I'm not too sure that shouldn't have been a 15-yarder right there. When you tackle with the face mask, that normally is the major. You might be talking about that at this time. Be sure to be with us this coming Thursday night. David Klingler and the Houston Cougars go down to Miami to take on the Miami Hurricanes. A couple of teams in the top ten. You don't want to miss it. 8 o'clock Eastern time. Mike Patrick and Mike Godfrey will be there for all the explosive action. <laughs> on first down, Caranzo drills it and has it incomplete as Rivers had it in his hands and then dropped it. Chad Brown again pressuring the passer. Wyoming's done a good job of going away from the three receivers to the single receiver side. Watch number 24, Robert Rivers. He gets away, and the ball just a little low from but that's still a catchable ball. You know what, Mike? That's as tough a pass as you can throw, though, particularly with the rotation on the ball. Tough because they reroute come. the receiver. Yeah. Second down and 10. Line of scrimmage to 33. Drop play. Driver. <laughs> Goes through one Colorado tackler, the Derek Hamilton, that came up and hit him. Glanced off. And now it's going to be third down. And the line to make is the Wyoming 43. Driver now 14 carries, 69 yards. Anybody on Colorado's schedule is going to issue them this. This secondary, Colorado, will hit you. And they play good pass coverage. This is as good a complete secondary as I've seen in a while. Toronto 16 of 36, 170 yards. Chad Brown hitting, ball is fumbled. It is loose at the 33, and Colorado has recovered. Brown caused the fumble. Standing pass rusher. He had eight unassisted tackles in last year's Orange Bowl. He was an inside linebacker that they moved outside linebacker. Watch him. He just beats the block of the tackle and then strips the ball away from Tom Francis. Let's look at it again. Tom Francis. Here's Chad Brown. See him coming. Look at him. He hit the football. Watch him come off. Aggressive player. You're right, Ron. Makes the recovery. Outstanding. Seven sacks by Colorado's defense tonight. Hagan on a play action. As it completed at the 15 and down to the 10-yard line is Rico Smith. Gary Barnett knows the Wyoming defense comes in. You just have a turnover. You just fumble the football. Try to go after him on the first.
first play. And you've got a good play action fake out of Darian Hagan and hit Rico Smith or Speedster on a crossing route. The Colorado fans are a little spoiled. They've had the enemy and Mike Pritchard around here, some big play guys. Five minutes and 20 seconds left to play in this one. Colorado up by 10, is threatening to make it a route. But it has been anything but that. Pitch to call. And again, that is Pat Glass. I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you a, a, a wager. Glass can find himself a, a starting spot. Whether well, Bowker comes back or not, the way he likes to strike. We're not allowed to do that, are we? <laughs> well, for a soda. Let's look at Cole one more time on this pitch. Here's the option. He's gonna get the pitch late. When he gets the football now, his eyes has to go downfield. Again, look at that tackle. Patrick Glass. You're right, Ron. He has played a great ball game. This Wyoming team has played tough, especially on defense. Offensively also. I mean, it's just complete team effort. Well, there were three touchdown underdogs. Power eye set. Paul will score. sports car, it seems mandatory to mention how fast it can go. All right. With an overhead cam engine capable of producing 224 pounds of torque, the new Subaru SVX can reach speeds in excess of 140 miles an hour. But how important is that? With extended urban gridlock, gas at $1.38 a gallon, and highways full of patrolmen. Instead, why not mention the things you shouldn't mention about a sports car? A strong well, an anti-lock braking system, over 24 safety features, the ability to carry four adults, all-wheel drive, engineering that endures. Still, if it's speed you want, we promise you'll be able to use most of the speedometer. Subaru, what to drive. I hope you're enjoying your evening. If you suffer from chronic halitosis, try Halo. Formulated Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and... The Allstate agent who helps insure your car can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate life. Financial strength you can count on. Sure, enjoy Mike and I. One week from tonight, we'll be down to Florida Field, Alabama, and Florida, 7:30 Eastern Time. By the way, Florida won today, 59-21 over San Jose at Alabama. Routed Temple, 41 to three. Matthews with five touchdown passes. That is a new Florida record. They brought a new offensive scheme into wow. the SEC. Shane Matthews has played extremely well for the Gators. to kick it off. Robert Rivers at the five. Got a seam. Good heavens. Then the official took the brunt of that one on the sideline. Chris Hudson almost put him in orbit. And with that, the side judge went down as well. Well, these DB DBs for Colorado, they hit anything in sight. I mean, they're just outstanding, hard-hitting defensive backs. Chris Hudson, number 47, Eric Hamilton, Deion Figures had some hits early in this game. 
Baylor, 27-7 over UTEP. That is final. As Arkansas stretches their lead over SMU, Baylor, the club that is coming in here next Saturday night. And I mentioned earlier that Grant Taft has one of his best ball clubs in the lot. Defensively, they are a very rugged ball club, led by Santana Dotson, who is one of the finalists for the Lombardi Award. And offensively, Robert Strait, one of the most sought-after running backs in the state of Texas for a long time. Everybody is okay, player and official. Five oh two left to play. Taranjos sacked for the eighth time of the ball game. It's Eric Hamilton this time. They come with a safety for the outside. Comes a little easier to blitz now. A little tough with Tom Carantos because he has to throw the football. Go, 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 go. Defensive backfield. I just can't tell you how impressed I am with the way this defensive backfield of Colorado has played. Eight sacks tonight for the Colorado defense. Wyoming has one sack of Hagan. Eight for a minus 44. And defensively, Chad Brown, you have to start off with him. Caused the fumble just a moment ago, which led to that last touchdown. Whistles all over the place. And the 25-second clock had run down. What's going through Joe Tiller's mind right now is he knows his kids have given everything tonight. He's got to be proud of his team to take him in the locker room and tell him, hey, we, we played three good solid quarters. We took the team as the national champions. We've got to grow from this game. And the transition year is difficult, but that team will stick with him. Second down in the line to make is now the 41. is going to be sacked again. Chad Brown will get at least a half as Leonard Renfro was in there with him as well. And for Brown, that's now a total of 10 tackles, five solo, and he has two, we're going to have to now say two and a half sacks. That's Great. a heck of an effort. Courageous performance by Tom Francis. I saw another, the game Thursday night, Louisville and Tennessee. Jeff Brown, the outstanding Louisville quarterback, just played an outstanding game and unfortunately was hurt and lost for the season, which is a very tough loss for Coach Howard Snellenberger at the University of Louisville. But he was a, played well and is an outstanding player. Tom Francis, the same thing tonight, has played well. Ball is caught. Beaker had cut in front of, we thought for a moment, might have what could have been a second interception in the night if it got through his hand. Swenson made the catch. Greg Beaker, he's, he's going to be on the route here. Matt Swenson's crossing. Greg Beaker picks him up, gets his hand on the football, and there's another deflection. A good catch by Matt Swenson. Kept his feet in bounds for a good game. from the second. That's Rico Smith. And he will go out of bounds close to midfield. And let's go down and get an update from Adrian Carson down on the sideline. Adrian? Well, I'll tell you what. Happiest man of 52,000 people here right now, Darian Hagan. Earlier he said he would do whatever it would take to win this game. Well, let me tell you what. 272 total offensive yards. Coach, you mentioned earlier that fourth dimension. How about 79 yards returning punts tonight? What do you do when you're a national champion quarterback? You sign autographs. I thought the happiest guy in this 52,000 was the uh, haberdashery dealer that sold him that tie. Here in Hagen, outstanding performance. Vince Joseph comes in at quarterback. Vince, a sophomore from Marrero, Louisiana. Very good thrower. Got all the reps in the spring because of the injury to Hagen. And the coaches say they have no qualms about putting this young man in the ballgame. That's Kendall Bussey, who has come in at fullback. 
He also was a freshman from Marrero, Louisiana, and he is the cousin of Barney Bussell, plays for the Cincinnati Bengals. And look at this. Colorado just keeps running them out. It's almost like they called central casting and said, okay, Hill went to the sideline. Now send me a 6'3", 230-pound fullback who's a freshman, and so Bussy comes out of the field. Got some depth. Joseph under pressure, and he is going to be sacked at the 45. That's Steve Putin, the sophomore from Bismarck, North Dakota. Timeout called by Wyoming. And so with two minutes and six seconds left to play in this one, the Cowboys will stop the clock. It's going to bring up a third down and 15. And right now, let's take the timeout with him. Colorado 30, Wyoming 13. If only your tires could talk. It's so tiring. He babies the car, then abuses me with messy vinyl cleaner. Hey, I'm rubber. Mm, no touch tire care. Ooh, nice foam. Introducing No Touch Tire Care, the first product to clean, shine, and protect tires in one easy step. No scrubbing, no dirty rags, no mess. Yeah, clean and shiny. Oh no, bad doggy, go away. Treat your tires right with new No Touch Tire Care. system in your car. You get a lot more out of your music. Well, the pass play on third down intended for Michael Westbrook was incomplete. And Colorado will have to punt the ball back with 159 left to play. Mitch Berger will do the kicking from back at the 30. And number 24, Robert Rivers is back in a single safety. Berger, five kicks, an average of 45 yards. He has been outstanding tonight. Special teams is something that Colorado prides itself in. And with numbers like that, you can see why. Their coverage teams do very well. Very high, good coverage kick. All the way back to the eight-yard line, and he steps out of bounds there. Well, that's about as good a result as you can have. You got the distance, and you also got him to get out of bounds so you don't have to give up any return yardage. Today's Visa players of the game are Tom Carranzos for Wyoming, 16 of 36, 170 yards, and he threw a touchdown. He did have one interception. And from the University of Colorado, the young man we showed you on the sideline just a moment ago, Darian Hagan, 271 all-purpose yards. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Pass incomplete at the 25-yard line. Robert Rivers, the intended receiver. A couple of other guys that certainly were high in the battle team. Rigby had a good ball game, but Talich, the middle linebacker, and also Pat Glass, who was a last-minute starter because of the in, uh, injury to Bowker. Certainly those guys uh, have to receive some consideration. Coming up next, baseball tonight with John Saunders, then followed by Sports Center. And, of course, we talked about Chad Brown. What a ball game he has had tonight. Carranzo zips it out complete at the 15-yard line and Rivers still working his way as the marker comes down and now a second. Well, there's no quit in this Wyoming team. Tom Carranzo's with a good throw to Robert Rivers who was running an out route against man coverage. He took it down, broke it off, and ran outside and good catch. Face mask, five yards, first down. 
this tape will be a good teaching tool for Bill McCartney and his staff. It's a chance now they have a game under their belt to be able to go back and say, okay, here's what we're doing right, here's what we're doing wrong, what we have to correct. And, uh, both teams will be better teams after this game, of what they've learned in this contest tonight. It's Dennis Ross who came back on getting the play at the uh, at the last moment. Now he comes off the field. They go with the draw. Driver to the 24. House guest making the tackle. Interesting story. Very, very good basketball player for you heard the roar from the crowd. That's what they're cheering about. Excellent basketball player. He's been uh, one of the mainstays for the Buffaloes. His basketball eligibility is up. He is out for football. Hasn't played, I don't think, since high school. And the coaches said if he had come out and played football the entire time, he'd be a heck of a player. Well, you see that size, 6'5", 245. That's where all the tight ends and the defensive ends in football go. They go to basketball. <laughs> Rodell House Guest. Got to this uh, campus here at Boulder by way of Dayton, Ohio. 44 seconds left in this one with Colorado now comfortably on top by 17, 30 to 13. And to clean up a little homework here, reminding you that uh, next Thursday night, it is Houston at Miami. In the Orange Bowl, that's an 8 o'clock Eastern start. Then on Saturday, the primetime game is Alabama against Florida. Louisville and Ohio State in the afternoon. That is the doubleheader on Oops. Saturday afternoon. Baseball tonight coming up right after this, being followed by Sports Center. Anything else that you can think of we might promo? I'm watching my truck on Tuesday. We don't know what time yet. We'll, we'll let you know. Carranzos running for his life, gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that will not be a sack, but he'll wind up with a game of only about three in the play. Ronnie Bradford, the junior from Commerce City, Colorado, comes over to make the stop. Talk about the Ohio State-Louisville game. Howard Snellenberger, of course, lost his quarterback, so going to Ohio State, he has 10 days to prepare. Ohio State with a big win today over Arizona. Yeah, for sure. Amidst what has been a very controversial working camp for them. A lot of distractions, and it, you know what distractions can do, Mike. I've had a few in my day. <laughs> 36 seconds left. Quick pass, and that one underthrown. Yarborough, the intended receiver. They didn't cover him. Colorado didn't have anybody on Yarborough, and that's why Tom Francis just picked it up. You have a read in your passing game. If somebody doesn't cover a receiver, just pick it up and throw it to him. Bill McCarthy's breathing a little easier. Fourth down, and of course, Wyoming down by 17. We'll give it one more shot. Pass over the middle. That is Dennis Ross. And he will have the first down at the 41-yard line. Wyoming has one more timeout left. There's a marker down, and I think that defensively, I think Colorado had jumped over there on the left side. You know, one other thing I wanted to... Offsides on the defense, refuse, results of the play is a better game. First down. Mike. A rumor that we've been hearing about the rules committee and maybe a major conference next year with the moving in of the the uh, the goalpost is an interesting story. Talk, talk to some coaches, Ron, and they said next year because the extra point's been so automatic, is it may, they may move the ball to the two yard line for your two point conversion to try to get you to try more two point conversion, and for the one point kick, put the ball on the 15 yard line and make you kick it from there. So that would encourage coaches to go for the two points. So that would be a 32 yard attempt on an extra point. Drop the middle, 10 yards, cut it off at 15, and this one is history. As the Colorado Buffaloes 